This is Professor Raymond Noby, Department of Ancient History, log entry number two. I believe I have made a significant find in the castle of Cantor. Having journeyed there with my wife, Henrietta, my daughter, Annie, and associate professor, Ed Gettin. It was in the rear chamber of the castle. We stumbled upon something remarkable. Once again, you ask the same shit you ask every week. But I'll indulge you, you creepy English tart. I'm here for my weekly stash of teddy mags, my favorite choco bar in the whole wide world, Toblerone, and my lotto ticket. <gasps> Poop on a shingle! I have one! Get enough could you? You just had to come back for more of the pain, as the boys continue the witchcraft retrospective with films 5 through 8 in the series. Does it get better for them? Do they off themselves mid-podcast? Listen on to find out. To keep up to date with the various projects of Derek Carey and Rabbit Child Films, Follow him on Facebook and Twitter. Also, follow Astro Radio Z on Facebook, Twitter and the Tumblr page where you can find all the new episodes and a selection of some of the best classic Astro Radio Z shows of the past. Astro Radio Z is on iTunes and Stitcher Smart Radio. Subscribe and pass it along to your friends. Now, on with the show. Welcome to another episode of Astro Radio Z. I am your host, Derek Carey, and here we are yet again, trying to make sense of why the fuck we're going on watching more witchcraft movies. We watched one through four and barely made it through last time. Now, we're going to talk about five through eight tonight, but before we do that, it's somebody's birthday today, and we have to wish Mr. Brian Kirst. A little bit of a happy birthday. Happy birthday, sir. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. How are you doing? How was your birthday today? My birthday's all right. You know, I, I've got an ice pack on my ankle, though, because I slipped on all the chunks of brain spewage that fell out of my head from watching five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> so, I'm limping a bit. <laughs> But well, doing fabulous. I so, don't uh, believe that for a second because I don't think there's anything left after one through four. Well, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> I was hurting before I even watched one through four with the, the brain matter. And yeah, yeah. I'm, I, the, I, think the, they, I have to admit, there wasn't much left after that. I think they designed yeah. these movies one way or the other so that the people would be limping after watching them. So. Whoa! <laughs> yeah, they'll be, yeah, they'll be limping or a little off one balance way. one way or the other. Yeah, yeah. Like, one way like or the other. Clever, clever little play on, play on things there. So uh, see that? Yeah. <laughs> Shasty. Also with us tonight is Mr. Glenn Bittner. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing pretty good. Mr. Mark the Movie Man is back for more. Yes, I am. <laughs> glad, glad to hear it. And of course, last but not least, Mr. Movieocrity Scott Davis. Hi, sir. Hello. <laughs> Probably least, but that's okay. I got nothing bad to say against someone who likes transfers. <laughs> yeah. Damn right. Love transfers. Dragon is, is squids. What? <laughs> is somebody trying to tell you that they don't like transfers? Where did that come from? No, I think I think that uh, the second uh, episode two hundred two, the second season, second episode of the second season of Movieocrity, I did on Transfers, and Glenn really took to it. You know, God bless him. So, long time fan of Transfers, ever since the eighties when it came out. Oh, of course, Tim Matheson. Yeah. What? Well, no, Tim Thomas. Thomerson. <laughs> Tim Thomerson. I Math- fucked that up. Tim Matheson's the guy from like Animal House, isn't he? <laughs> yeah. I don't even know. I just Impulse. made that fucking name up. 
His uh, name's Tim. There it is. I'm just gonna call him Doll Man. Yeah, Doll yeah, Man. Mister Mister Metal Storm. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He was basically under contract from Charlie Band for the entire run of the '90s. He's never been under contract. He just keeps on doing the movies. I know, right? <laughs> I think he book. probably did something bad in Italy on location, and Band's just got some dirt on him. Well, he did have quite a <laughs> bit of a. Problem. Oh yeah. <laughs> Time. That's why his hair's so white. That yeah. Ex- that explains Doll Man versus Demonic Toys. <laughs> well, dude, I love Tracy Scoggins. Well, remember I know, I though, hope Mark. Have done that to her character, though. I I remember know. though, Mark. The half of Doll Man versus Demonic Toys. There, he wasn't even in the movie at all because they just reused. Yeah. The it was just stock footage. footage. Was I was stock footage. I was yeah. pissed when that came out, and I love. I'm. You'll. You'll see. Like I'm like the hugest. Charles Band fan. I'm I'm still the hugest Charles Band fan. I've bought so much from their store. Been a huge fan for like 30 years, 40 years even, uh, almost. Like, well, basically, but on most of my life, we'll just say that <laughs> because so so the math makes sense. But like, yeah, I mean, I'm in the damn Empire book. It turns out. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yes, uh, yeah, I saw I that. Was to do a whole episode That's on awesome. I, I was fucking shocked by that. I was just read. I bought the book because I was gonna get it anyway. Uh, the when they did the you know fifty bucks first you know hundreds printings. I'm like, yep, I'll get it. I want to read that. And I'm like reading through, reading through, reading through, and like Jesus, that's a review I wrote ten years ago. <laughs> that's me. <laughs> that's pretty excellent. But, but I'm a huge fan. But the long story short was that even I was pissed at Dolphin versus Demonic <laughs> Toys. <laughs> I like, remember watching that for the first time, going, "You gotta be fucking kidding me!" Seriously. I was pissed. Well, I was the, one of those guys where every time there was a full moon coming out. I mean, I was checking for it. Like, I had to be there and get that full moon when it came out. I was well, it was the only thing you could really depend on in the 90s. You could depend yeah. if you were going to get some wacky bullshit from full moon. Yeah, yeah. They were the most, some of the most dependable people in the 90s. It's they, true. They were, good, they were good wacky shit versus what we watched recently. Yeah. Speaking, oh, speaking yeah. of. Speaking the, of, yes. Yeah, speaking of, <laughs> let's get back into the pain. Let's revisit the pain, boys. It's like witchcraft. It's like you're always pacing outside the doctor's office before you go in because you don't want to. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> but at least, at least you get to see titties when you walk in that door. Yeah, so it's not all you not. do. Yeah. <laughs> Becca, all, not all you see. <laughs> so let's start with Witchcraft Five. The reign of supernatural terror began with the original witchcraft. Three seductive spellbinding sequels followed, each one taking you deeper into a world of black magic, diabolical horror, and unearthly passion. Now, enter a shocking new dimension of unholy desire as you dance with the devil in Witchcraft Five. I have served Satan, and now, at last, my moment of rebirth draws near. Warlock Will Spanner is back. He's facing his most fiendish adversary ever, the devil's disciple known as Cain. This little demonstration of my power over you, Warlock, was amusing. Next time, no one will land. Soul Steel. Mind controller hell bent on throwing open the gates of the underworld. A friend of mine has a message for you. He says he wants your soul. Well done, William. We are now in the second stage, and that much closer to opening the gates of hell and unleashing an eternal empire of evil ruled by Satan himself. We can't stop him. He'll use any weapon, any illusion, and any body in his demonic quest for ultimate power. The sixth day of the sixth month of the sixth year since I last appeared. No one can break the fight. The tradition of terror continues in Witchcraft 5, Dance with the Devil. Now on video cassette from Academy Entertainment. Witchcraft 5, Dance with the Devil, came out 1993. And uh, what did we get? Well, here's your synopsis for number five. Cain, an evil warlock played by David Huffman, done up to look like a generic version of Ronnie James Dio, takes over a rock club. Yeah. 
<laughs> he uses beautiful, large-breasted, and frequently nude women to try and collect enough souls so that he may be able to bring Satan to Earth. In his pursuits, he stumbles across Will Spanner, who attends one of Kane's magic shows. Kane possesses Will to eliminate anyone that would stand in his way. This one, guess what, boys? We finally get the softcore Skinamax witchcraft movie that we've been begging for for the first four films. Yes. This, this film stepped up its game considerably. Holy crap! Did it ever? Yeah, I, was gonna say. <laughs> I mean, when they deliver, they they were like being so damn chased all this time. When they delivered, she let the floodgates open. <laughs> well, and, and luckily for us, they opened the floodgates with some really nice looking women. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Holy camoly! There were some nice looking women. Let's let's start off with with this opening section, like the other two previous films, where now we've kind of set into motion a, a repetition where the opening sequence of the film sets up whatever the main bad guy is going to be before Will Spanner comes stumbling in and completely fucks up the entire movie. <laughs> so <laughs> that's great, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and it, it, it starts off with this idiot boyfriend and his. Uh, prostitute girlfriend tricking some lonely fat dude looking to get a little poo nanny and they accidentally kill him and they're trying to run away from his dead body or did they put it in his car or they just ran they put it in the trunk i think they put it in the trunk yeah, yeah. Yep. and they run off accidentally hit another bum kill another person and uh <laughs> who i didn't quite understand what okay i want you boys to kind of like clue me into this because I've watched it twice and I still don't know what the fuck happened. So these two idiots run into this street bum that's uh, looking to pick something up off the ground. They hit him, they, you know, hit and run. And then all of a sudden this uh, televangelist or this priest in the backseat of car with his sexy uh, assistant stop, almost hit this bum, run out to try and help him. And then some green, freaking bad effect shoots into his eyeballs <laughs> and he gets possessed and all of a sudden becomes horny. Like what is, what exactly was that supposed to symbolize? Cause they never explained it. It was the, um, demon. It was, the, yeah, it was, like, it was like the warlock or the demon that was possessing this person. He's been like immortal this time, but he's had to use all these other guises. He was about to croak. So the priest leans over him and zaps his essence into him, so now the priest is gone, and this guy's like this, and obviously this guy was not leading as chaste of a life as the priest. <laughs> you know? So that's what happened there. He, like, became this other person. Mr. Priest walk, walked out the door as soon as that happened. Took him a while to get to his assistant, though. I was disappointed by that. Well, you knew he was going to get to it, though. He got to it. He got to it. That's he Kimberly. Did. That's Kimberly Bowen. She was in a couple. Uh, she's in a couple Scott Shaw films. Who is a guy who kind of went on from like what Donald G. Jackson was doing, uh, mm -hmm. doing like uh, he has a Zen filmmaking approach, and his films are just freaking like awful. improvisational. Yeah, improvisation. They're sometimes awful, but I kind of love them. Well, he, he did all of those sequels to Frogtown, right? He did a couple of them. Yeah, he did the for, he did the last the last one. There's it, it says that there's four Frogtowns. There's actually only three, and one was released in an unfinished print, and the and then he released it in the full print. But right. so that last one, which was uh, uh, I believe called Toad Warrior, <laughs> yep. he did that. Well, the ones Kimberly Bowens are in are Samurai Bikers from Hell and Atomic Samurai. So those that's I mean fuck it that's you gotta see that for the title alone well jesus so. Christ. well no you don't have to see any of those films all it is is him with the camcorder running yes. around with this it's the worst shit you've ever seen i love i know but it's like one of those things where you just watch it you're just like oh yeah it's like it's like it's like a meeting with a it's like a meeting with a dude it's like a movie dominatrix you know it's like it's like, it's like this movie comes on you know and you see like these bad effects they're making up the lines just you're like that's right i'm a bad boy 
<laughs> well, getting back to the to this evangelist, um, which was which was a funny character in this movie. Um, he gets possessed by some green electricity, and then becomes a total skis ball. And in one of my favorite scenes in the entire movie, when he finally gets it on with his assistant, they have sex. And as he comes, he says, "Praise the Lord." <laughs> One of my favorite favorite parts of the movie. So anyways, so these two bumbling idiots, they they are driving out of town and they run out of gas in the middle of nowhere and uh, decide to, to just hoof it on foot and stumble upon some bum who they feel is uh, – he says he's a bill collector and they actually think he has money even though he looks like he hasn't bathed in about four years. He's a, he's a fucking bum. This is perfect. What's perfect? This fucking guy ain't driving us anyway. Forget stop. about the ride. I'm talking about the money. Did you hear him? He's a bill collector. He's probably got all stashed in there. Or oh, maybe. Well, listen, this is the plan, all right? I'm going to get him going, and you go back there, and you grab something, all right? You come back out here, and you hit him. And do me a favor this time. Don't hit him so hard. And uh, they knock him out, thinking, "Oh, let's go rummage through. He must have money, seeing how he, you know, he's living off the land." And they walk into his shack, his where, Tardis of a shack. Yep, his Tardis <laughs> of a shack, yeah. which is, seems to be an ongoing theme of this series. And they mm. find this this sword that looks like somebody bedazzled. <laughs> and then, and then the bum comes in. And unbeknownst to them, he's a mighty demon wizard warlock and uh, takes possession of this this hottie and kills the the idiot, beheads him, right? You live only because it amuses me. I have only to wish it. And your soul will join that of your friend over there. Yeah, thank yeah stabs him and then beheads him, I believe. Yep. And then we move on to the film proper where we get yet another Will Spanner. And uh, honestly, boys, I, 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 I just want to throw this out there. Was, it, was there any point to having Will Spanner in this movie at all? <sighs> no, because he spends most of the movie cross-legged and crying. So no. <laughs> not, on, not only that, if, if Kane had just done his show – ignored the fact that Will Spanner was there and just said, okay, thanks for my show, bye. Will have been gone. His plans would have worked. True. <laughs> He's got a point. Don't engage an enemy you don't need to engage. <laughs> there. And he is the stupidest, unreliable <laughs> white witch. I mean, what the fuck? He gets hypnotized right away? Yeah. <laughs> Like in that in, in that magician from, act, and I mean, from a nightclub act, yeah, yeah. From what a, kind of white witch are you if you like the guy says one word and you're croaking like a frog? I believe this man is a duck. <laughs> no wait, a chicken. <laughs> <laughs> This little demonstration of my power over you, Warlock, was amusing. But the next time, no one will laugh. <laughs> let's, let's reiterate, we, we said this many times in the last episode. Will Spanner, in fact, has no powers. Yes. Yet everyone in the, and this is something I'm going to keep reiterating with each of these movies, because each of these movies, at some point, the main bad guy goes, that Will Spanner is very impressive. There is something <laughs> about it. Every last fucking bad guy thinks this dude has the cock of the walk, you know? This, the, yet he has absolutely zilch powers. He never uses them. He just, like, stumbles and tries to fight his way through everything. Yet he, every bad guy thinks, you know, I better watch out. He, I could use him for something. He, he cannot can't fight well, him. either. The impressive <laughs> thing about him is that he hasn't walked in front of a bus. Yes. <laughs> I do have to say for all the slick chicks and limp wristed dudes out there that he was the hottest Will Spanner. You know, Mark mm-hmm. Kennedy was pretty hot and he got naked. It's the only film of the eight where you actually see some hot boy butt. 
So. <laughs> yeah, there are some pretty a, in-depth scenes with him. Yeah, yeah, as I said, for the slick chicks and the limp rusted dudes out there, <laughs> this would be the one to watch for that. Well, there obviously, and I don't know if you guys picked up on this, but there was some serious homoerotic undertones oh, in yeah. this film. Really? Were, no, you couldn't figure that one out. I didn't. No, I, I didn't. I, I actually didn't get. It. Oh well, I think it was his relationship with Kane. There was there was uh-huh. this interaction between the two where <laughs> there was like, okay, so let me build my case. <laughs> no, I, I believe you. It's just funny that the one gay dude in the group didn't get the homoerotic relationship. But I think I think that's the funny Gator thing. Sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your gay dog totally is the worst, right? Totally. <laughs> but okay, so here we go. So Kane takes possession of of Nicole, the the actress. I forget what was her name. Nicole, Nicole Spammer. Sassaman. Or Sassaman. Yeah. It's there. It is. It takes control of her. Doesn't use her in any way other than to just go and then sex up Will Spanner. But when Will Spanner brings, because essentially Kane just possesses Will Spanner and has him go, like, be his errand bitch and go kill off anyone, like, in the surrounding area that owns a club or anything like that. So he's basically a mafia kingpin as opposed to, like, an actual, like, demon. So, so, He'll send Will out, and Will will kill whoever it is, and then take their essence or soul, which looks yeah. like this horribly rendered like donut effect. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and then we'll take that team, in which Kane Kane has this power to hypnotize people by opening up his cape, and this light shines from his cock, and uh, blinds everyone. <laughs> And and after he, he he's like this light is blinding like he'll bring this soul over to Kane and as uh, uh, Kane will absorb this donut into his light cock. <laughs> <laughs> And then, and then there's, there's this there's this moment where you see Kane kind of shudder like he just came, and then I, this I literally wrote this down. After this, Will leaves the room. The first time happens, Kane looks over at Nicole and goes, "The warlock is very impressive." <laughs> Now you tell me what's going on there. <laughs> oh, yeah, there there was that definite scene. <laughs> the whole lifting up the open cape, spanners down on his knees like this. <laughs> I I caught it at that point. It was that second time when he observed the the big soul or whatever it was, and he Mr. Good Soul or whatever. Mr. Good Soul. <laughs> So yeah. let's let's go down the line here. Let's just give general thoughts to this because I could go on forever about about the. Uh, <laughs> this was my favorite one of the bunch that we had watched so far. It was just super campy. It was over the top. The guy who plays Keen, uh, David Huffman, literally chews up every scene that he's in. Oh. It's unfortunate that he's not in more of the movie because every time he's in the film, it's a super fun film. But uh, otherwise, it just it's just, uh, you know, it's a jerk off fantasy, the whole film. And Will Spanner might as well not even be in it. He's a, he's obviously there as a model to look good. And and that's it, because he really has no point in this movie. And he's definitely not a lawyer anymore in this movie. He's nothing. He's just some dude that gets possessed. So, uh, Brian, what were your general thoughts on this one? You know what? Um, what astounds me about these films, and and this one I kind of got into again in the middle, is that I kind of like the first thirty or forty five minutes of them. That they're kind of fun, and they they have some good B movie tropes, and then they just get so fucking boring. You know, about a third of the way into it, and then maybe stumble a little bit towards a recovery at the end. But um, they, they kind of shoot their wad in that first 30 minutes or so. But there was some uh, awesome, just crazy ass shit. My favorite segment was when they are keeping Will Spanner captured by candles on his palms. Yes. <laughs> Little tea candles. Yes. <laughs> so he doesn't get out of the circle and get possessed again. And he's got this hot girlfriend, Carolyn Taylor, and who I love, who oh, did yeah. in a bunch of. Scream yeah. Queens illustrated magazines and shit like that d- during the 90s. Um, but, and this this freaky spiritualist, Anastasia, 
And all of a sudden, the girlfriend disappears. The Nicole Sossaman character comes in and releases Will Spanner, has a fight with Anastasia. She kills her. Mm-hmm. And then she turns to Will and starts fucking him on the stairs. It's immediately. It's hilarious. It's awesome. But the whole t- uh, and her tits are slapping against his chest and <laughs> just going everywhere. It's it's awesome. It's an awesome scene. Um, These tits did not allow a lot of breathing room for anybody. No. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I got. I gotta say, I really appreciated every scene she was in. I yeah, loved it, it. It, there was definitely something. Um, but the whole time I'm wondering where the hell the. The girlfriend went to. I don't think you're supposed to even acknowledge the fact well, that, <laughs> that there is a girl. Oh, she just disappeared. Me, just disappeared. Well, I'm like, I'm like I, just I was waiting this. for like the cat fight for her to, you know, maybe I, I'm too school on Days of Our Lives. I was I was waiting for the the chick to come in and the girlfriend to come in and start cat fighting with the. Well, that does but, happen. That does happen. It does later. happen. It does happen later. It does yeah. happen later. But let's um, remember, there's a, there's a scene, the first scene where uh, Sassaman uh, Fox Will is in his bed with her right next to him, that's true. Yeah. sleeping, and she doesn't wake up. I mean, these two are just fucking like rabbits. <laughs> like they're, they're, they're just slapping away, and she doesn't wake up in the slightest. Well, well that's because it was it was uh, in the nether world it was yeah. magical it was so the nether regions that's the nether right. regions yeah, that's, right. <laughs> that's why oh jesus christ like, one of i got to tell you one of the things that that there was very little about this movie that bothered me because it finally i think for me worked as a trashy shitty movie it it was i thought this was actually kind of fun i mean there were stretches that were a little boring but one of the few things <laughs> that actually bothered me and this is just it's a personal thing there's a scene where will goes to take out some guy and uh this guy yells at somebody that was in his house oh god pisses down your fucking throats named you know? Derek. Of course, that's exactly what I was going to say. Every single time there's some jackass in a movie, his name is fucking Derek. Every fucking time. Jesus Christ, people. Let's come up with a different name. Not all Derek's are assholes. I may be an asshole. Come on now. Well, welcome to my world. Think about how many Scots are in movies that you actually like. You know? <laughs> welcome to the club. And Star Trek doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> so, Glenn, what were your thoughts on this one, man? Kane. That's all I cared about. <laughs> Kane was, was – he was an idiot. But I think he was he was such a perfect trashy movie villain. Yeah. I mean his his acting was so over the top and everything was just so dramatic. He was brilliant. I actually I, I, I loved him. I mean when we were first introduced to him with the the moron uh, couple out in the woods with the whole hey he's a bill collector but he's got lots of money because yeah bill collectors <laughs> hang out in like cabins in the woods with all their money. How <laughs> ridiculous. I mean, at, at first I'm thinking, did they like, shoot way Collect- back in time where bill collectors were like, you know, dudes who wandered around from town to town for the scene? <laughs> yeah, they, they, they gypsies. take all the money yeah. in cash door to door, yes. <laughs> yeah, total gypsies. This movie finally, you know, as, as a witchcraft movie, embraced what it, what, it, what it is, which is it's a cheesy sexploitation film. That's all it is. Right, and they finally embraced that and said, "This is what we are. We're not going to pretend to be anything else. We're not going to even really try to have that much of a story. Right, we're just going to have some some naked chicks, and then you know, a little bit of overacting, some more naked chicks, and that's about it. And that's, I mean, it's I got what I what I expected from the first of the witchcraft movies. Yeah, I agree with you. I think this was finally the film that I was hoping we'd get." with one of the other ones. I mean, there was even a few decent, fun little effects. I mean, there was a there was a point where some dude gets his heart punched through his chest, mm-hmm. and then there was a beheading, and then there was some shitty sword in the armpit trick um, where somebody's getting stabbed with a bedazzled sword, and it's just, you know, just in their armpit. Um, it just uh, it was hilarity. This movie was just cheesy fucking... There was a ton of finger power shit where they're like, rah! <laughs> I I love that stuff in these movies. They're fucking hilarious to me. Mark, go for it, man. Yeah, I agree. This is the first movie that it, it owned up to what type of movie that it was. This thing didn't take itself too seriously. This is the first time I think 
we got any attempt of just humor is in the two idiots at the beginning of the film with the the girl and the guy i mean they they were kind of you know the comic relief <laughs> you know they they definitely weren't supposed to be serious characters and yeah you you, you just it was the first one that the cover actually promised. It, it gave what the cover promised. It's what it was. It's, it, mm-hmm. the, it didn't, it would had no illusions this time around what type of film it was versus the first four, which you kind of get the feeling they were trying to be kind of more serious. This one, not at all. They, like you said, they knew what they were. Campy, sexploitation, here you go. And the villain guy, Kane, he was making the most of his scenes because it could be the only thing that he acts in before he goes back to Burger King. So by God, he's going to make every scene count by God. God, it looks like that. I'm looking at his IMDb page. Uh, You're probably right. (laughs) He He went back to community theater. He did one other credit, which was a voice, which was voice acting in a video game four years later. Wow. Where he played President Jimenez in the Journeyman Project, (laughs) Pegasus Prime, which is a video game. Oh, that is too bad. That is too bad because he he needed to be in some low-rent freaking Star Trek episode. Yeah. Oh, he was perfect. Or a recurring villain in the series. I would have loved to see Kane come back. Kane's I revenge, think so, too. You know? <laughs> Especially after we see what's coming for us. Oh, in God. Two episodes. Or episodes. See? I keep thinking this is like a TV show. It is <laughs> like a TV show. They set it up like it. Oh, my God. It's just ridiculous. Um, Scott, let's close it out. Close it out for me. Yeah, not too much to say, but yeah, I, I, it does feel like a TV show, just like the, especially the TV shows of today. A um, couple comments uh, is that they have the – if you notice, this kind of continues on with that thing where they're uh, – Will has to you know, stand up to the horrible presence, but really what it um, always amounts to is he basically has to stab some dude in the heart. <laughs> and that happens all the time, and then like some glowy thing will come out, and okay, now we're safe again. And then, like, the next film, he's going to come along and he says, oh, what do I do? Well, Jesus Christ, you've been through this before. Stab him in the heart and wait for the glowy thing to come out. <laughs> well, he has amnesia because he's a new actor every movie. Oh, so well, now, well, now he is, and that's actually a plus. I'm glad that other guy's not in there anymore. Uh, but... Uh, so they they have this the sword which they say is you should say is a bedazzled sword that's a perfect way to say it because they they say like oh it's priceless this this might be you know I think when they the 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 scuzz balls at the beginning first see it they say this is worth thousands like that looks like it came from like the bin at a Goodwill. Come on. Yeah. 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 It was some prop that somebody put some bedazzled jewels all over very badly. Mm -hmm. Oriental trading company, man. Yeah. (laughs) It's ridiculous. Well, what about, let's talk about that final sword battle where, where the two of them are like, was it me? That it was. You're no better than me. I am. You're not. Uh, the dude, the director saw Highlander one too many times. Yes. He's like, come yes. on, I want to get in there and direct Highlander 6. Let's do this. <laughs> come on, Weinsteins. Here's my demo reel. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there was so much that was just so ridiculous in this movie because it would be like, we, the way we're talking makes it sound like it's a lot more exciting than it is. It is there's, not. There's some pretty long stretches of nothingness uh, along yeah. with the song softcore scenes that tend to go on far longer than they need to. And uh, I mean, for the, the, the women oogling, there's a lot of that in there. Um, so, I mean, there is one scene where Will Spanner is uh, doing his girlfriend in a shower and he would have to have like a 20 inch cock to be fucking her because <laughs> she's like on his belly. It's, it's the most ridiculous, stupid scene. It's, it, and it goes on far too long. And, um, there's a lot of that, but there's there's I think there's enough in this movie. Wouldn't you boys agree that that it's actually kind of an enjoyable watch? Oh, I think it's an enjoyable watch. I mean, it's yeah. I don't think it's great by any stretch, but I think that you know, um, it's like you guys said, you know, they embraced what they were. They brought in like I don't know if someone sent them a dead rat or something, but they finally got their inner <laughs> Zalman King on. 
And man, I'm just so happy that they did. They're getting a Christmas card from me this year. They <laughs> brought in these women that they based that they hired totally based on Hooter size this oh, time. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it was it was based. I mean, it was it looked like. Seriously, like if you if, if like some goth video is directed by Russ Meyer, except except that this guy never cut the camera. But you know, and and you know, you got Kane being all uh, intense. You know, I wanted to see how he did speed dating. He'd be like, <laughs> be he'd, he'd be like, "Will you give me your soul?" I, um, my name is Becky. <laughs> and then he flips, then he flips open his cake and ju- uh, cape and just shows his light cock. And his then light his- cock. <laughs> and then- Comes the donut forbidden donut. Yes. No, I mean, like, I think it gives like enough of the cheesy elements that it's not a great movie. There are some dull stretches, but it has enough of those buzz things. So it knew it's basically they said this is what we should have been going for from the beginning, and they finally got their shit together. And yeah, I think it's enjoyable too. Def- yeah. Definitely earned its spot at eleven o'clock at night on Cinemax. There you go. Oh. Yeah. Totally, totally skin of max material. I tell you, if this would have been on and I would have seen it in the 90s, which oh, I yeah. must have missed it, on Skinamax, I would have taped it. I would have probably watched it a bunch. Yeah, me yeah. too. I would have, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, 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 definitely, <laughs> I definitely can't say that about any of the rest of these fucking movies. I'll tell you that. Well, the um, Spanner did upgrade his girlfriend every movie. She seems to get hotter. So, but it's the same girl. Uh, it's the same character, right? Four, think, five, six, and seven. It's, yeah, it's, it's it's this Kelly chick. Yeah, it's yeah, Kelly, it's yeah, Kelly, five, but six, it's a seven, new. Seven is- well, there's even uh, I mean, it goes even weirder than that. Is that the next two films, which will will transition into the next one now? But uh, the next two films, there there are these cop characters, and between six and seven, they're the mm-hmm. same cops, but they've all of a sudden one of them turned into a female. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah. weird, so weird. So it's part that's, of the witchcraft. Yeah, oogie boogie. Looking, want a date? Are you looking for a sleazy good time? Then check out the podcast that gives you more half and half bang for your buck than any other show out there. Exploited Cinema. Join hosts Bat32, Dale Roy, and The Go. As they bring you sleazy and cheesy movie reviews each month. They'll also bring you engrossing interviews with indie filmmakers and horror historians. So what are you waiting for? Put your money on the dresser and get busy or else stop wasting my time. I need a man-sized podcast. Not one for little boys. And that means exploited cinema. Listen up, suckers. Visit Exploited Cinema today at www.exploitedcinema.blogspot.com. You dig? I encountered a most interesting young man today, Will Spanner. Does that name mean anything to you? Of course. He was once one of us, but he rejected the path of our Lord. I believe that he could be a thorn in our side, so to speak. I want you to pluck him out. So to speak. Yes. He could be of great service to us with his powers. I suspect that he is in contact with our virgin sacrifice. 
and he is protecting her from us. Bring him back. Bring him back to us the best way you know how. In some cultures, they consider the egg to symbolize the human soul. Think of Mr. Spanner as an egg, my dear. Witchcraft 666, The Devil's Mistress, was came out in 1994. This is another one that Troma picked out and barfed out onto the world. Um, Supposedly, it originally went out as 666, but then got changed to 6. For some unknown reason, who knows? It it seemed perfect for me. 666 makes total sense. But anyways, here's the synopsis of this stinker. A serial killer who rocks a muscle shirt and jeans that come up to his belly button targets young women wearing gold crosses. Detectives Lutz and Garner enlist Will Spanner to help out with the occult angles of the case. Brian, what did you think of this movie? You know what? I was actually pretty excited. And, and unless it's uh, like a David Dakota's Ellen Cabot period, it looked like it was directed by a woman, Maria Davis or something. Or I mean, Julie, Davis. Julie, Julie Davis. Julie Davis. Huge fan Julie of her. Julie Davis. Yep. Co-written and co-directed by a woman. So I thought there was some humor. I thought there was some nice banter between the detectives. I didn't think that acting was that, that horrible for the first 30 minutes or so. It started to lose me, honestly, once they got Will Spanner involved. Surprise! And um, <laughs> yeah. got him into uh, the police station to look at all the charlatan psychics because they think there's some kind of yeah. spiritual. And that segment just went on. and They showed about what seven or eight psychic frauds they could have done that like with two or three and then gotten the main villain in there the, the last kind of spiritualist that, the, that they're interrogating about these murders is the actual guy behind everything but it just it wasn't badly acted it just went on forever and that's my problem i i, I kind of enjoy these movies for the first 30, 35 minutes. Yeah. And then they just kind of get into, they lose all their momentum and their pacing and they just really, really start um, to drag. Yeah. Cause they, they, they spend, they, they shoot their load right off the bat. Like yeah. the whole first sequence where this dude walks into a diner and picks up uh, Stephanie Swinney, who is amazingly hot, hot. <laughs> yeah. and he 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 basically is like this creeper that won't go away, and ends up like delivering the least uh, believable pickup line ever. Have you ever had a screaming orgasm? What? I yeah, couldn't yeah, believe they did that. I couldn't believe they actually went there. Yeah, they, and and she falls for it and takes and she's this total. Yeah, and yeah, she's well, the br- virgin. So yeah. she falls for it and takes this dude who's a total rapist home. And yeah. what ends up happening? They end up uh, start uh, having foreplay on uh, tomato juice on her floor. And, and then and then he pricks her with a needle, shoves her in a in a trunk, and on the side of a road starts screwing his uh, his, yeah. his, his yeah. equally the- hot <laughs> girlfriend right in the front seat. And then on the hood. And on the hood, and uh, just about everywhere traffic. else. During traffic on the hood. Because <laughs> <laughs> they have a couple cars drive by, and I'm like sitting here going, wow, man. <laughs> yeah, so you we end up finding out that this that this couple is under the control of some evil warlock that's uh, that needs virgins in order to gain like superior power or bring about the devil is is always the fucking case in all these stupid fucking movies. And the the main guy that they're under control from is this tall, horribly acted ponytail dude that wears an 
ugly ass like canary yellow suit <laughs> and he has long fingernails in which he eats olives off of that is so fucking gross. <laughs> and there, there's a scene where there's another scene where a, a girl is sucking food off of his fingernails, which also equally grossed me out. Um, it just like this guy was the worst fucking character. He was like the worst bad guy of the entire series. Yeah, but, but those olives were great because they kept appearing in his martini every time. You had to see he had another olive in his martini. <laughs> Did you see that? Did you notice that in the bar scene? He's talking to him, and he eats one olive, and there's he takes the olive out of the glass. There's no olive in there. Next scene, he's taking another olive out of the glass and eating it. It just he keeps appearing. In That's his, his demonic powers. Is, is that is that ooh, olive? He was he was able to to make olives appear and able to make horrible plastic pentagrams appear on people's stomachs. Yeah, like the the worst pentagram on a skin effect I've ever seen in a movie before. Ever. I, think, I think it was using shrinky dinks is what he was using. <laughs> <laughs> I think they only had it in their budget to use shrinky dinks. So they... Oh, it's just fucking unbelievable. Now, I got to admit, I watched this a couple times for the show. And uh, the first time I watched it, I actually was like, oh, this isn't too bad. It wasn't really that bad. And then watching it again. This movie drug like yeah. crazy. Well, that first like 30, 40 minutes are all right. But yeah, once Will Spanner comes in, because essentially what ends up happening is that the police can't figure out why all these women are going missing and getting killed. These policemen are getting heat, of course, from their captain. It's a typical, you know, police move, uh, like plot where they better figure out what's going on or their asses are grass and blah, blah. Blah, 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 blah. Nobody fucking cares. Their whole, the police angle was the worst part of this movie. Could have cut the entire thing out. And nobody would have gave two shits. But for some reason, they con Will Spanner into, like, helping them out. Why was Will Spanner helping these idiots out at all? It made no sense to me. It's he because, was- as his secretary said, Oh, Mr. Spanner, you're such a good person. Next to God, I think you are the nicest person in the whole world. I don't know about that. Uh, I thought this, that line was hilarious. The secretary. <laughs> it's like, like, gosh, you know, she just must not not have met that many people. Like, you do know that the last movie, this guy was like possessed and like killing people. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And giving yep. his girlfriend some vicious tongue. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah, I mean, well, that's no, the that's the thing is that in these movies, whenever he, he it's like you know when the whoever Will Smanner's possessed, because suddenly. The sex turns from like the little <laughs> soft core groping to like total like rough sex. I mean, sometimes you'd ex- actually expect like the girlfriend to be like, you know, like I'm feeling kind of bored. Let's see if I can get my uh, boyfriend possessed again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, right. Well, so that Kelly has to be the cobwebs down there. You know. <laughs> dumbest female character ever. He gets oh, rapey yeah. with her in two movies in a row, and she doesn't leave him. Yeah, yeah, she I, yeah, that that pissed, yeah, that pissed me off. Yeah, he gets rapey with her, even, even though he's possessed in the in five, and then again in six. Yeah, she's, she's in, a bathtub, in, in a bathtub, in a, in a yeah. very violent bathtub sex scene. Which, other than the the rapey, almost near drowning aspect, that scene and the subsequent scene where she does the exact same thing only by herself. Yeah. yeah, she is. She is so smoking fucking hot that I <laughs> yeah. love those two fucking scenes. Holy I, balls! I think was she my no, I think my notes for that say she should just spend her entire life in the bathtub. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Glenn, what were your thoughts on this one? First of all, uh, if if I judge the world by this movie, every cop is insanely angry. Every all these cops were they were always angry all the time. And a problem I had with this one, if if I'm viewing this one as you know the the you know the soft core porn that even we are supposed to be, this one kept taking a tin snip to your balls because it'd be like, hey, hot steamy sex, bald cop, hot steamy <laughs> sex, bald cop. I'm like, seriously, who edited this thing together? It's, it's like you know, it's like you know, we're gonna every ten minutes throw a cock block in there in the form of the bald cop. <laughs> Who couldn't pick up a chick if he tried? Yes. This guy 
Oh my god, he's he he's like so the scummy. opposite of a pussy magnet. Yeah. Oh, he was so scummy too. He was the he's the type of guy who was like, who was like making sexually suggestive comments about like a corpse. Oh yeah, she's warm, like a donut straight out of the oven, huh? Jesus, Garner, oh, I can still smell a perfume. Do we have an ID? Uh, her name's Peggy Malone, age twenty-seven. Says so she's got blue eyes. Not a bad looker, huh? Jesus Christ, Garner, the poor girl is dead, and you think she's worth the roll in the hay. You're fucking disgusting, you know that? And I like the fact that apparently evil comes in a syringe. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, if, if it can come in a lava lamp like in Prince of Darkness, why not a syringe? Yes, <laughs> yeah, so I mean, you know... <laughs> I, I guess the world wasn't as evil till the invention of the hypodermic. Um, <laughs> and I, I did like that we got moon lightning. Oh, oh yeah. The, the death oh, by lunar eclipse. Yes. <laughs> and yeah, it's at times the movie, I'm just like, seriously, you could cut 97% of this film, have a four minute short and be done. I don't know, all oh. the cop stuff. Basically, just have a, have a, 10 minute sex scene and then moon lightning and you're done. That's the movie. <laughs> moon lightning. <laughs> yeah, they could have had that first scene, then just cut to the Will Spanner girlfriend's uh, bathtub sex scene. Or actually cut that, just go straight to her bathtub scene where yeah. she's by herself, and then cut to the end, to the final battle so you have you can pass all of the olives on the fingernail shit you, you, you can pass all the rubber belly pentagrams uh, you can pass the strip clubs that look like they were shot in some dude's living room oh uh, you, I think I think Brian kind of nailed it on the head is that by half the halfway point of this film they're still setting the fucking movie up yeah, yeah halfway the through the fucking sucks. movie Pacing suck. Yeah, sex, second second worst strip club scenes I've ever seen in a film. <laughs> oh my god, they, 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 it was like so which, led, which, some... which leads us to say, what's the first again? Oh, <laughs> uh, the movie would be Demon Seduction, or also known, also called Demon Sex. Yes. Oh, oh. I have. No, yep, I, I've oh. seen this one. Brink Stevens is in that Brink one, Stevens. right? And, and Tom Savini. Yeah. The I've thing is, is I would say drinks. that is Brink Stevens' absolute. Worst film that she's wow. ever had. It's close. I it's mean, she's made very some close. Oh, man. I've yeah. seen some bad ones. It's very close. <laughs> <laughs> it, it really seemed like the witchcraft movies, uh, even though they get more sexy or more sex in them and more nudity, their budgets get smaller because that was the worst strip club set I had seen. I mean, it was like three cardboard walls and someone's dry bar in their basement. Do you know what it reminded me of? It reminded me of the basement from part four uh, yes. where the cult was in. It reminded because if you guys, I don't know if you guys noticed this, but all of these films, five through eight, used the same house location in every single one of them. Even the freaking eight that was a standalone film thought was that was. I, mean, I, didn't, want the exact exact I, didn't, I didn't want to say for sure because I wasn't positive, but I thought it looked I thought it was. It was the same house, yeah. So I have a feeling that just like uh, Dave Dakota did with all his thirteen thirteen movies and all these movies that he keeps mm. barfing out oh. that, that there, he has a location <laughs> and that he just keeps shooting the goddamn movies there and just tossing titles on them. And this, they have this house location and they're just going to milk the motherfucker for all it's worth. They're going to shoot every single film there and that's it. Because that that basement, that strip club, oh my Jesus. Literally some dude's card table. It was the worst freaking bar I've ever seen in my entire life. And I, I, this is a little bit of a side. I'm just curious. Has anyone seen anything or interviewed David Dakota or, or know him? Does he actually think those movies are decent? No, they're products. If you really or, or does he just know or does he know that, hey, a certain segment of the population will buy these just because there's yes. half naked dudes running around? Yes. I have listened. I've yes. listened. Okay. To some of so, his, so he's, uh, he's aware that they're not 
It's not like Ted Michaels where everything he produces no, he well, thinks is a master. Well, remember, remember, uh, Brian, he is he is an exploitation filmmaker to the core. He has yeah. always his entire career made movies to make a buck. Yeah, that is that is plain and simple. It's, at, at times, sure, he he may have some aspirations to do something beyond that, but he's always been a uh, director for hire that right. was willing to be a chameleon and do whatever is necessary in order to continue making movies and make make a living from them. Uh, and he has a deal for these thirteen thirteens and these rabbit heart movies, and that's what he's going to keep continue to churn those out until he finds another angle that's going to, whatever the next thing that's going to happen. That's why he all of a sudden he shifted over to the talking animal movies and all this other stuff. I actually, uh, because I know, and I know this is a sidebar, you can cut this out if you want there, Derek. Uh, but it's, uh, I actually really love David, Dave Dakota uh, because um, he did spend so much time doing some really great jiggle flicks. Uh, yeah, you, you know, and yeah. they, and yeah. then you know, it's almost like he had a chance to do his own type of movie, and he said, "You know, I'm gay. <laughs> Why? Yeah. Like, I mean, I'm glad you like the tits. It doesn't do anything for me, so I'm going to do these exact same type of movies, but I'm going to put like cast male models in the movies." And I thought that was really awesome. The thirteen thirteens are all interchangeable with take like, their this, underwear off in the shower. What is up with that? He, I, I know what that is. I know what that is. Actually, I know what that is because it is. Uh, you're gonna love this. Oh my okay. god, you're gonna all love right, this right. because this is on the audio commentary that I list, list listened to for his movie Beastly Boys. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> and he actually says, "I'm not gonna said, get into why you were listening to that audio commentary." I but. love his commentaries. They're great, and I uh, and and there was actually a long story leading up to it, but I I grew to be a fan because. He said. He says. He says. I know people expect. Keep expecting these guys to strip down to, and to nothing. But you know what? These are my movies, and I actually find the guys in underwear sexier. It's like you know, if you see like some girl, but she's wearing latex all the time. Some mm-hmm. some, some guy. Some guys that like doesn't for, does it for him. Him. It's the guy. It's the dude in the underwear. And of course, in the thirteen thirteen movies, they're always wandering around yeah. the same house, yeah, working yeah. out, showering. <laughs> In their underwear. I gotta gotta admit, I've watched far more of those movies in hopes that I would see something decent than I want to ever fucking admit. I think I've actually only seen one because I figured the rest are going to be just like that. Oh my god. They are like, I've I've got a I watched a fucking one with Sasquatch. I watched one with with the fucking Frankenstein. Obviously, I watched Cougar Cult with the... That's the the one I've seen. That's the one I've seen. Well, that one was built up to me from Linnea from when uh, we shared that table with her at Flashback. She had just got done shooting... Uh, cougar cult and was telling me all about it so it's like okay I gotta check this out and then you watch it and they just when they turn into cougars they just put a freaking like fade, like that pit, horrible picture art of a of a cougar on their faces <laughs> and oh my gosh they actually turn into cougars in it no, they don't actually. Well, oh, they're supposed to. Like, they're supposed to, but it's like it's the worst. Really effect. bad. It's the worst effect you've ever seen in your. Oh, sure. No, no, no. Those the thirteen thirteens are very cheap. I think that it's it, it's kind of that thing where, um, and I know I'm. I know this is way off topic. I'm sorry. That's, you know what? What's funny um, about this is not they, to cut you off, but what's funny about this is is that they suffer from the same bullshit that that these witchcraft films suffer from. It's a lot of padding, and they're they're selling themselves as an image yeah. more than they're selling themselves as an actual story or a series. But go ahead. You know you, uh, and I'll tie it in because I think I think in order to understand, it, you do have to do this thing where. I watch uh, some of these films in um, – I mentioned this in a couple of my episodes of the show is that I watch them in like something that I call Zen mode. I have no knowledge of what the fuck Zen is. But exactly. But it's – Zen mode is like – I'm like I'm not even going to focus on what I'm expecting to see next. I'm not focusing on what just happened. I'm just going to take each bit as it comes, try to process it, and just like as it comes and – Sometimes that helps. <laughs> Not all the time, but sometimes that helps a lot. And it's almost the way, like, that's how I actually do watch those David Dakota films. It's how I tried to watch a few of these. It wasn't as successful. <laughs> no. Well, the thing is, 
Oh, those Dave Dakota, those thirteen thirteen movies are just downright awful. They're just watched, they're I, they're I, a complete the waste of time. They are fetish movies, and that's yeah. all they are. Yeah, they're fetish movies, definitely. Yeah. yeah, I mean, soapless showers and walking around in underwear. That's literally the entire movie. Mm-hmm. Literally yeah, the you, entire did you, movie. Did you see? Did you ever see any of the uh, like little like scream knockoffs that he do uh, during the mid nineties, early two thousand? The Brotherhood. Brotherhood Stakes. I saw so many of those movies because I was like gearing up for this uh, big like retrospective type thing, and I lost track of how many to- times I heard people say, "Well, boys, let's hit the showers." <laughs> you know, oh but in uh, the way I figure, you know what? Okay, equal time. You know, I mean, how many movies has this guy had to do where he had to have like the girl shower scenes, which of course I enjoyed. Well, this might not be for me, but it's for somebody. Right. right. <laughs> well, that's the same thing with these witchcraft movies is at this point, number six, it is literally just like the the plot is just a setup to get to the sex scenes, to yes. get to the next titty rubbing scene. So it yeah. doesn't matter. Um, five at least had some fun in between those scenes. Six, honestly – didn't have much of anything. It, it was like the first time I watched it, it felt like it was a lot more fun than this. If you were to watch it again, you're just like, Oh my God, this is fucking boring. Cause the cop sequences are just trite. They're cliche. They're boring. They aren't funny. And, uh, Will Spanner. Yeah. It, it's just, ugh. this one was, was definitely back to one through four level for me but uh mark i don't know did you get your your chance to kind of spit out about six a little bit a a little bit i i didn't have too much to say i mean i i kind of got a kick out of the the cops i mean i know their sequences didn't uh uh, add anything to the film but i i kind of liked them a little bit i i i thought they were uh kind of funny characters um you know the sleazy guy of course but uh, and, and they had no they didn't really fit into the movie at all, but I I, I kind of liked them because they, these were guys, they were trying to be characters, actual characters of some kind, you know, for me. So I, I enjoyed the cops actually a bit. But yeah, overall, it was it was really one of those two where it's just like, twiddle the thumbs, okay, okay, oh, look, tits, okay, here we go, twiddle the thumbs. <laughs> oh, and look, more tits, okay, twiddle the thumbs, support, you know. I mean, it, it really was. And I mean, the film, too, I mean, they, they never really go in too depth of, of the pentagram and the only thing, you know, and, and the big broody guy and... Uh, yeah, it just it was a mess. It was really they they must have had success with five and figured oh we could just put out anything now and and so they tossed something together because they had a weekend and uh, yeah I, yeah yeah and it, then, compared to five it really was a weaker film it oh, was kind of disappointing. Everything else is a weaker film compared to five. It, it just one of those things again where all of a sudden it builds up. You get to the final battle ritual scene, and Will Spanner kind of bumbles his way into killing. Well, this time it wasn't even Will Spanner. It was the fucking lunar eclipse killed the bad guy. Yeah. And then Will, Will Spanner walks away. Fiend, end of film. Isn't so. this also the film where, okay, not only do we not see the bald cop for a while, we just lose him for a while. Isn't this also the one where he goes up there with the cop, and the cop comes up afterwards and says, I can't believe I got lost in the woods. Yes. Yes. <laughs> oh man, I, Great, I, I man, but man, with Will Spanner and this guy on our team, we're fucked. It's not, <laughs> yeah. The Witchcraft Six, though, I actually kind of liked Witchcraft Six. Still, I did. Uh, but it's it's not great, but it, it, it's got things. But I think it it really did embrace its roots. Also, it is directed by Julie Davis. You would never see the, like the future work that she's done, but I've seen two out of the other four movies that she's done. I've seen uh, All Over the Guy and Finding Bliss, and these aren't just good movies to me. Those are great movies. They are mm. the, those rare romantic comedies that are actually really funny and really charming and really well-paced, which you cannot say about Witchcraft 6. 
No. And so uh, I so I was just happy to see this. Like, oh, so this is where she started. And if you look at a lot of her filmographies, it's like Julie Davis made her debut with "I Love You, Don't Touch Me." I'm like, oh no, she didn't. Uh, no, she didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, they, they have her. They have her listed as, uh, in her IMDb now. But she went on and she did Amy o, Amy's O or Amy's Orgasm, which was touted yeah. as a really great indie film. And uh, I, it's I one of the ones I haven't seen, yeah. And I haven't seen it yet, but I heard really good things about it. But so she did go on to better things. She kind kind of cut her teeth on this one, I think. And yeah. and I you know. really recommend uh, Finding Bliss is on Netflix streaming right now. Oh, awesome! Uh, and I'll uh, check that out. and I also yeah. recommend All Over the Guy if you ever catch up with that. That was a good one. Welcome to Witchcraft Seven <laughs> Judgment Hour. <laughs> Someone is killing the beautiful young women of the city, but they're refusing to stay dead. Someone is stealing the nation's blood supply because they're thirsty. And someone is trying to stop the madness before he becomes one of them. What you're witnessing is a woman in the midst of being victimized by a vampire. Where? What more do you two need to see in order to believe this? In the explosive climax to one of the most intense and erotic <coughs> horror series of our time, Will Spanner is caught in the ultimate clash of heaven and hell. See if you can get Spanner on the phone. In a world of sexual rituals and supernatural powers, <coughs> will he save the world from destruction or die trying? Starring Playboy Playmate Alyssa Christensen. Witchcraft 7. Judgment Hour. Blood never tasted so good. Witchcraft 7. Judgment Hour. Again, another trauma release. Was released in 1995. Now, there seems to be some confusion between Witchcraft 7 and Witchcraft 8. Which came out first, as it seems like, uh, or which was filmed first, because it actually seems like Witchcraft 8 was shot a year before. If you're, From what I've read, if you look hmm. at the credits... Um, it actually lists 1994 as the shooting date when it was finished and when it was shot. Uh, so that would bring it before Witchcraft 7, um, but it wasn't released until 96 uh, when the company that was actually like distributing all these films went under and was picked up by another company. And then Witchcraft 8 was slapped on top of it. But it doesn't matter. Witchcraft 7 Judgment Hour came out in 1995. Trauma released it again. And here's what we got, boys. Will Spanner is at it again, battling sex-starved, beautiful demon vampires. Will enlist the help of cops slash HR nightmares and shoes, Lutz and Garner, to bring down the ponytailed samurai vampire Martin and his beautiful erotic demonic slaves. Compared to part six, I thought part seven was actually a step forward. It was actually, we, we, we got back to some of the goofiness. Of part five was instead of witchcraft angle, we went more with vampires this time. But it, it immediately, right out of the gate, goes straight into a sex scene. And there was something about the, the sex scenes in this movie that were so strange. Mm -hmm. Now, bear with me, boys. This one, yes, it is a pure softcore film, but almost every single sex scene in this film had some sort of object that was used in it. I'll label it as object fetish sex. The first scene where the vampire picks up the girl who's drinking milk at a party <laughs> out, of, out of a champagne glass. It was time for bed. I guess, right? But she, she wanted had some to stay classy off, about yeah. it. There were cookies yeah. off camera. But she, she wanted to still look classy by drinking it out of a champagne glass. Um, they start getting at it, and he dribbles milk all over her, her oh. beautiful tits and her yeah. chest and all this shit. That's one scene. Later on, Lutz and Garner are spying on a couple across the street with a, a telescope. They're on a stakeout, but who knows why they're actually watching these two. Oh, 
What's she doing now? Oh, there you go, baby. A little bit more to the right. What? Ooh. What? Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you are not supposed to be enjoying this that much, Garner. This is a friggin' stakeout, not a peep show. These two, yeah, they're just perving. There's, there's, <laughs> there's this extended sex scene between the people they're perving on, where they have a cop blue light that they're rubbing all over each other's body. Yeah. For who knows what fucking reason? No, so, I. Yeah, so that, that's like object, uh, object sex too, and then later, Will with his girlfriend has tie sex. Yes. With his with his necktie, where he he ties it around her and like rubs it on her gently, and then pulls off her underwear with it, and it's just like, they were, this movie sex scenes were so fucking weird. Let's get into that blue police light scene, Scott. You obviously have something to say about this. Well, I mean, scene. it was just, this is like a scene where I mean, you say, you look at that and you say, see, the thing about a sex scene is that you have to think that you know if if, you, if you're not doing like some straight old Gonzo type thing, you have to like have it like where like okay, I can see where these people would enjoy that. There is no reason to use the blue police light except that it looks. <laughs> really fancy on film yeah, yeah when so the lights are off but the lights weren't all off when they started using it they well, were just literally they don't know what the fuck they're doing legs and and rubbing it on their chest they don't know, this. They, they, they don't know what they're doing and yeah i mean i remember seeing an, an adult film in the 90s um called the exhibitionist that did the same thing with like fluorescent lights but that one worked because it was with madison and she could do no wrong but i mean <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but i mean like it's like okay i get why that looks cool and looks sexy to me but i can't make that connection to the characters on screen because i can't imagine why that would be sexy to them and the, as far as the milk thing as i mean i like milk as much as the next guy but man that's just gonna smell yeah. <laughs> well, trust me, it it can't smell much worse than the than a certain sex scene in in the next movie that we'll get to later. Oh, right. But but getting to this one, yeah, that was just something I actually thought that made the sex scenes kind of interesting. Not interesting in a sexy way, but it's just like that. It just like. Hit was me on my toes, different. like what the fuck was that? It you was know? something different. <laughs> so. Hey, look, Sex at Kmart? I don't know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> we have a blue light special. Yep. Hot, hot pussy. <laughs> <laughs> that was an easy joke, guys. That was a really I, good job. Uh, I, I, I ran with I, – I, I, Glenn, Glenn – Threw the ball and I I I, yeah, I it snatched it. I snatched it from him and ran with it. Sorry. I, I thought that was pretty brilliant, Glenn. Yes, yeah, so I to say. <laughs> so all the girls in this movie again are super hot. Um, there's a lot of extended boob rub in scenes. But the cop doesn't get a, naked. No, and she's a Playboy playmate. What the hell? Figure that one. <laughs> No, I'm sorry. Every girl in here got naked except her. I'm waiting for her, and she does it. And I'm like, what? Did 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 Spanner, the girl playing Spanner's wife, take up all the nudity count for the film? <laughs> One of my favorite scenes with with his his wife was when uh, the vampire character who's going around just randomly biting chicks and turning <laughs> them into vampires, and uh, he he finally the vampire finally gets to Will's girl and bites her, and immediately after biting her, she starts masturbating like yes. almost instantly. <laughs> It's like, okay, that's interesting. That's that's, that's something that's different. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's interesting. But another thing that this movie had kind of a fetish for was it showed a lot of close-ups of ass cracks. A lot of them, full-on ass crack shot that will linger forever. Which I wasn't complaining about, but it was just something I noticed. <laughs> I actually well, interviewed Ashley Ray, who played Rachel, the milk girl. Uh huh. Oh, and. Uh, yeah, she said that – she didn't say a lot about witchcraft, but what she said <laughs> is the most memorable thing was running down an L.A. neighborhood wearing nothing but a, hosp a hospital gown, being shot ass first basically. Yeah. I mean, yeah. 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 She said it she was... will never forget that. And I love her. She did a lot of things like oh, yeah. driving and all that stuff. So I love that first 30, 35 minutes with her. 
if they would have just continued on that track, I would have really loved this one. Well, yeah, I sure. really, really enjoyed that first segment. And I thought that was a lot of fun. I was going to say is out of all the female actors in this film, she was actually probably one of the better ones. I mean, yeah. I, you, you know, I like her character too. I, I kind of wanted to see that character keep going because yeah. she, she actually seemed interesting and was trying to be something in front of the camera outside of just being skin. Uh, well, she so, was just, so she she's was got just quite a resume. Yeah, yeah. She yeah. was just skin in this movie, though. Let's not make oh, any... No, 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 but, but she, she had a presence, too. Uh, yeah. No, she did. But let's talk about the setup to her, her big scene that you just described with her running off from the morgue uh, <laughs> as a vampire. And in the setup to that scene where she actually like gets shot is this five-minute-long jog scene uh-huh. where we just follow this guy that's jogging and that she's stalking literally watching this guy run for five fucking minutes <laughs> where nothing happens and then it culminates into the worst edited fight sequence I've seen in <laughs> some time where you can barely tell what the fuck's going on it's just like the, they're all close ups and it's all moving it's like I, I thought I was watching Lord of the Rings for a second it was just the worst edited fight scene I've ever seen but anyways yeah she was she, all the girls in this movie were, were good looking but it was the beginning of the end for real boobs in these movies. This is for, we were firmly in place with the fake boob, the implanted boob. From here on out, that's all you're gonna see. They wanted the big boobs. No, nope. better get used to the horribly bad fake boobs from this point yeah, out. Well, well, his wife though. Oh no, I'm sorry. I'm thinking of the next one. Never mind. Uh, <laughs> see. <laughs> what yeah, is it? You're, you're right. This one. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Glenn, Glenn, what did you think? They loved close ups in this one. And not just of, of Astrax, just close ups in general, like super close ups. They loved using that. It's like they learned that one, whoever the, the cinematographer was, he learned that one technique how to do a close up. And he's like, took a class on it. And he's getting every penny worth of that class. <laughs> I don't know. Just. I, I, I don't think I liked it as much as Six. I don't even like Six that much, but <laughs> this one I like less. Uh, just, I don't know. There's, there's I mean, yeah, the, the weird stuff with the sex. I mean, the, the blue light and then, I mean, the whole thing where the cops are, like, staking out the apartment and it's like, let, let, let's let the bad guy just have sex. And then we'll go bust him. <laughs> what about the scene where they're toward the end where, you know, they're about to bust in and they, they found the vampire and, and this subplot of him trying to do a merger with some other company. And uh, this guy runs out and they have a firefight and they shoot this guy. They run up to the guy that they shot and decide to immediately pop a squat and just have a cigarette. Don't you think we should be inside helping Spanner? No, I kind of like the idea of sitting out here and picking them off one by one as they come out. <laughs> Besides, you know, if he needs us, he'll yell. Yeah. Which worked out great, it's, let me tell you. Take the one <laughs> yeah. vampire. Big, huge stake through the heart. Like, we should call an ambulance. Like, for the person with the stake through the middle of their chest. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's call an ambulance for the, you don't call an ambulance for a dead person. <laughs> <laughs> and I did like that. What was that kind of monkey bat puppet thing they used? Oh man! Oh my gosh! That was hilarious. So any, so what? What uh, Glenn is setting up here by listeners of Astro Radio Z is that the vampire weird points in this movie would all of a sudden horribly morph into some freaking rubber bat toy <laughs> that looked like a reject from Rock and Roll Nightmare. Yes, was, that's exactly what I thought. It, it, it was just like, I love Rock and Roll Nightmare, and John oh, Fasano yeah. is, is a friend of the show and a, a, a great guy. This looked like something he wouldn't wipe his ass with. <laughs> yeah. This was the worst. It was in, in the way, and this was something that, an effect that kept, like, once I think I don't think there was one in six, but starting with seven and eight were these bad picture morphs. Yeah. Where all of a sudden the guys he would go and all of a sudden it would just be a stock foot a stock photo that would morph and then they'd cut into some monster. It, oh, it's just fucking terrible. Terrible. Spanner, you know, 
at, at least at some point in his life, was a lawyer. And the <laughs> fact that no one has arrested this man for reckless endangerment, for the number of women he has put in the mortal danger all the time. <laughs> Glenn, how about, how about this? Here's another movie where he is told to flee the scene of a crime. Like number three, where the where that one demon soul sucker guy yep. told, hit his his uh, no his what was it? His his the lawyer. Boy, there's his a lawyer, the, the yeah, prosecuting lawyer. attorney, right? Yeah, the prosecuting attorney. And, yeah. and hits him with his car and tells him to to leave. To leave. Now in this one, he stakes the um the female vampire in the heart kills her completely in broad daylight right next to a street and cops tell him to flee the scene. <laughs> Go on, get out of here. You know I could get this part for doing this. Don't worry about it. We'll take care of it, all right? Just get out of here. I don't know what their cover story would have been without that guy there. Like, okay, but you're cops. How did she get a piece of wood through the heart? Um, no, the explanation was this. Look, we'll say that she... Tripped and fell on a stick when we were in pursuit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Man, LA is dangerous. Holy shit. <laughs> oh my God. Will Spanner in this movie, and this is just my personal opinion. You guys may refute this, but I thought Will Spanner, this was the best Will Spanner of the entire series to this point. But he, he had he the acted. worst haircut. Of all of them in the in the series, not that that means anything, but I thought he was the best one so far. He was, I think, part of it because he was also the biggest ass out of all the yeah. Will Spanners. He was a real dick. He was a real <laughs> dick. He really was, and I think that's what his character needed. If he had been this big of a dick early on. It would have been awesome. Well, yeah, like he, he's having marital problems too, but I mean, his wife was kind of annoying. I like. Oh that. man, let's talk about his marital problems. So, he's are they still, married yet? I didn't. I thought well, they were just still living together. Yeah, uh, I, I, thought, I, I, I don't I, think he's married. I think or, she wanted yeah. to get married with him. I figured they were hitched or something. No, yeah. I think I, it's implied, but for some, but. At some point, they always say, well, I want to get married because in part six, that comes up or in part, oh, in part five, one of them. Who the hell we can't tell. We can't, we can't tell. tell. <laughs> but, but let's talk about their relationship. So he just gets done staking this uh, vampire in, the, in broad daylight on a busy street, gets home, and his girlfriend's like, where have you been? I really don't want to talk about this, not now. I've been up all night worrying! Who was she? Oh, Christ, Kelly. I want to know who she was. You at least owe me that. <laughs> this is not what you think. I want a name. All right, Rachel, are you satisfied? I want a last name. I don't know her last name. It's real nice, Will. You don't even know her last name? What'd you do, pick her up in some bar? No. Where'd you meet her then? It's not important. It is too important! I have a right to know! You owe me that much, you son of a bitch! Okay, I met her at a hospital, okay? That's all I want to say about it. Now, could we please talk about this later? No, I want to talk about it now. Please, Kelly, I got a lot on my mind right now. How could you do this to me? How could you take everything that we have and throw it out the window like this? I have never cheated before on you since we've been going out together. <laughs> And then what happens? He comes back later and tells him that he killed someone, and she's okay with that. Yeah. As long as she's, he wasn't cheating on her. You didn't fuck her first, okay. right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Let me, here's a tip, guys. Tip. If somebody is telling you that you were cheating on them, don't tell them yes if you weren't. No. What kind of tactic is that? I couldn't figure that out. I mean, it's like, you know, you can tell what the problem is. Like, you know, it's like I'm, I'm sitting here like I suck at relationships and I'm sitting here to saying like, OK, see, Will, your problem is you're not communicating. And <laughs> <laughs> and 
you so need he to be truthful and respectful I, of your spouse or whatever the fuck you're hanger on. <laughs> I did kind of think of this as Kelly's Revenge was kind of my subtitle because once she turns into a vampire, she goes after him. She actually bats some span around a bit compared yeah. to the previous two where he got rapey with her. And then she offs the guy at the end. So, I, I, I mean, it was kind of – she at least got a little a pair of balls, I guess. And uh, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, she As was finally someone that was a little. I mean, even though she was basically a sex toy the entire. Oh time. yeah, totally, totally. Yeah, totally. she she at least got her, you know revenge on the on the vampire. But uh, Will Spanner was just really. Really, he was weird in this movie because at one point, yeah, he's the best Will Spanner of the entire series so far. But he, so he, he pulls this stupid move where he lies about cheating to his girlfriend and then runs to the grave of his mom and sits in one of the weirdest sequences I've ever seen in a movie where he's rubbing dirt on his face and crying. Yes. Oh yeah, yes, yes, yes. It's like what, what exactly is like? Oh, I, I miss you, mom. Uh, I need. My power, and he's rubbing dirt her. all over his face. Never knew her either, it, so. What I found is, even with films like these, they knew they were making money. They just threw shit out there. Didn't really pay attention to screenwriters because they, they knew they were going to make money somehow, some right. way. Um, th- there was a kind of similar, like where it would have been so simple for him to go, "Hey, you know, hon, it was a bad day. I'm so sorry. It's not what you think." That would make sense, but I don't think yeah. the screenwriters even give a fuck. In five, they have that whole to backtrack of it, they have that whole sequence where that Kelly brings over her priest friend with Anastasia, the spiritualist, to find out what's wrong with Spanner. And they have this whole conversation about uh, Bane, the, the 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 main villain playing with with spanner's you, you know personality two or three scenes later the priest comes over kelly goes oh he's not acting like himself he goes well maybe someone's controlling him and she goes what do you mean and like just two scenes ago she had a scene with anastasia where they were talking about the fact that someone was controlling spanner this bang guy so i mean it just seems like they didn't give a fuck they weren't you know checking you know t- to see that scene Continuity. to scene to scene yep. everything matched it was just they knew they were going to make money and it was written in a week and yeah they didn't give a fuck you know, i think you, know. you do have to i think i see that i definitely you know with, with the carelessness when it comes to those like super angsty spots, though, with the dirt and stuff, I'm like, someone has to go through the extra mile because you have to set up that scene. You have to yeah. shoot the thing. You have to give the guy direction. And at one point, you'd hope that the actor would just turn around and say, wait, really? <laughs> Am I rubbing dirt on my face? You want me to cry and rub dirt? Is is it a, is it a sex thing? What is this? I don't oh, get it. I don't know. I don't know. But on the, the inverse, the vampire the main bad guy going from part six that had one of the worst bad guys in the series this vampire was actually kind of fun in a very unintentional kind of way he had really horrible bad vampire teeth every time he went to bite someone it it was a bad mold that uh, the teeth almost came out of his mouth (laughs) and then the best scene of the entire movie was him shirtless in his in his house practicing with a samurai sword. Yeah. Just out of nowhere, this dude is just going whoosh, 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 like he like he's some samurai fucking master. I was fucking dying. I was laughing so hard at this goddamn scene. Just out of it's a sex flick, and then all of a sudden this dude, hair down, looks like Fabio doing a samurai sequence. Oh my fucking god! I about lost it. Oh man! It, well, this is done by the same director who brought us uh, what is it? The Rug Suckers from Mars. Yes, and that the was, writer of Witchcraft Four. <laughs> yes, the, the over. That's some illustrious shit right there. Yeah. You know, and and he he also brought us uh, different strokes with Dana Plato being naked in it. I mean, this guy, you know, not exactly quality uh, uh, resume here. So it's uh, it explains the bat scene though, because if you've ever seen oversexed rug munch- suckers from Mars, uh, he did that with stop motion guys, and this bat looked like. He pulled it from his special effects studio. Uh, effects, I use in quotes. Yeah, air quotes. Because <laughs> it was some 
puppet on a stick just off the camera <laughs> that he oh. spun around the room. Yeah, that he just he turned to make it look like it was looking in other directions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and which oh. led to an epic final battle. <laughs> oh my god. Here again is another battle where the, the main vampire it, uh, Will comes at him very bumbly and then uh, and the vampire guy war, like just slaps him off and goes, Oh, that was very impressive. <laughs> Try again, Will Spanner. It's like, man, these guys are impressed by nothing. This guy's got nothing. These are demons with very low standards. <laughs> well, well, I think Spat see, that's what Spatter does. He bumbles into it. That's his whole like chameleon trick. He he bumbles into it until the bad guy does something stupid, like be a big bat and come directly at the guy with the wooden stake. Flying <laughs> around his head. He's gonna fly straight at him. And then Will Spatter gets a clue and then Oh, yeah, here you go. <laughs> He's like, this is a good plan. <laughs> and, and think about this, boys. This was supposed to be the last film. Yeah. Well, yeah, because they both off Will each Spanner other. Spanner dies. Yeah. He dies in this final battle. He gets staked through the heart. And the stake all of a sudden grows about like another 10 inches where it, it, it breaks off between the two of them. And and he dies, and uh, this was touted when it originally came out as being the final installment of the film. Ah, okay. Ah, that the explains series. it. Yeah, I didn't know that part, but it makes sense. And uh, I, but he dies so pathetically. <laughs> You know, well, yeah. it, it's, and, and, it's a good symbolism for is, his because, character. If you look, I mean, the cops come in, the cops, who, the same cops who just waited outside and said, yeah, he can take care of it. Uh, they come in there, and if you notice, they say, like, oh, maybe we should get up. No, he's dead. <laughs> I mean, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, you know, yeah, you know what? This is Will Spanner. Probably not worth the effort. <laughs> so, so I ask you guys, now that we've We've gotten through number seven, and officially at this point, now let's not even talk about what comes after this, um, because Witchcraft 8 is a completely dislocated, disassociated movie with the rest of the series. It very well could have been just a movie they slapped Witchcraft onto. I think uh, that's what it says on Wikipedia. Yeah, I believe it was. But up to this point, this was the series, and Will Spanner is dead so i want to ask you guys i want to put this out there before we get to the final film seeing how our main character the thorough line through this entire series has been will spanner i want to ask you guys who is will spanner if we were to sit and actually think about what this character was as a whole what was he a schmuck that's my only word. Every time I see him, I'm like, this schmuck again. <laughs> well, he's – okay, so he's a lawyer. He's a warlock. He's uh, a womanizer. Brian, how would you explain this character if you were to watch these w- – watching these seven movies? He's like a cipher. The, the, whatever situation that the – screenwriter decided you know they wanted to do they would just throw will spanner in to connect the films together he's kind of a blank you you know there isn't a you know some films he has a career one film he's you know a prosecuting attorney or something the next he's a divorce lawyer then he's you know a public defender his career kind of sort of stays the same but i think he's a different lawyer when they mention a career, he's a different type of lawyer. He's a divorce a, lawyer, lawyer in number, one, number one six, point. I believe. Yeah. yeah, but I think he was described as a different type of lawyer in seven, if I'm not – it, it seems like he, his career changes a lot. And I think as we mentioned from part two to part three, it's only a few years, but it, it, it really – like career-wise, it should have been six, seven, eight, nine, ten years later because he's fully established as right. some kind of lawyer in number three, and he was just – barely going to college in number two so yeah he, he was just kind of a, a disjointed ragamuffin the screenwriters just threw him wherever they wanted and for some reason they thought he was the glue that kept the series together when he was really um, he wasn't a character yeah, he, he really was wasn't a character he was a detriment to the series you know? i think actually more well than yeah there's nothing there was nothing to him i think at least the in two to four um having it even though the guy that played him was awful um, at least it held some continuity together where in these 
last three, five through seven, because it was it was played by someone new, it finally brought out the fact that there is no character here. No. It, it isn't. It's literally you just – you take any random Joe Schmo character and slap Will Spanner on him, and there you go. I think my favorite Will Spanner moment from any of the movies, and I can't remember – it was either in this one or it was in uh, part six. I want to say it was actually part six, was – the only courtroom scene they show the whole movie is where they show a courtroom. The gu- judge has obviously just basically tossed Will's case out of court saying, you're, you're full of shit. And it just has Will turning around and just kind of shrugging like, huh. <laughs> walking away. <laughs> I'm thinking, that is so perfect. He is a bad lawyer. We got to just <laughs> point yeah. this out. Like, we, we were making jokes about him being like, he's like being like, you know, softcore, Buffy-esque Matlock shows. But let's face it, he's a bad lawyer. <laughs> he's not only a, a, the worst warlock ever, he is an awful lawyer. He's, he, there's nothing to recommend Will Spanner. You're just horrible, Will Spanner. <laughs> Yet everyone knows who he is. He knows nobody ever. He's a rapey creep to every girl that he that he has. Yeah, including his wife or pseudo wife. It's it's just dumbfounding. Like this series, it, as a it, as a whole, this series. Just like it makes no sense why it was anything more than they could. They just slapped this title in front of random films. And then it had the Hellraiser syndrome where they just wrote Pinhead into the movies. And it's, <laughs> that's, you know, that's what this feels like. Is Will Spanner was nothing. Only difference is, is that with those movies, they say, oh, write Pinhead into it. OK. And then these movies, they'd say, write Will Spanner. What the fuck's that? Yeah. <laughs> right. Will Spanner's dead. That's it. Kaput. Capiche. Done. What do you think, Glenn? You glad that Will Spanner's dead? Oh, fuck yes. <laughs> <laughs> if you were to put some sort of byline on his tombstone, what would you write on there, Glenn? Here lies Will Spanner. Finally. <laughs> <laughs> nice. A tombstone that just reads finally. finally. That's great. Finally. <laughs> <laughs> what took you so fucking long? Since witchcraft is such a prominent way of life in Salem, it's worth discussing how the fear of witchcraft began in Salem Colony, as well as in this country. Now, for centuries, witch hunts had been occurring in Europe, but in old Salem, it was still folklore until the last decade of the 17th century, when the Reverend Samuel Paris had employed as his housekeeper a West Indian slave woman. Tituba was her name. And she regularly regaled groups of enthralled girls with vivid tales of voodoo spells and witchcraft. When the Reverend found his nine-year-old daughter and her 
11-year-old cousin flouting about in convulsions, their only answer was they were bewitched. The good reverend believed it to be Tatuba casting spells on innocence. And because of this one man's fears, a mass hysteria was created, culminating with what we know to be the witch hunts. In the years to follow, thousands of innocent victims were senselessly tortured and slaughtered. Witchcraft ate Salem's ghost. Like I said before, there's some like contention up there for when this was actually shot. Doesn't matter. It was finally released in 1996. Um, shot in 10 days for $48,000. And uh, this was a, Yep. This that's was too, that's too much. To, well, you consider it was shot on film. So mm-hmm. most of it's probably going towards the film and processing. Because really, it's the same location that was in all the rest of the movies that we had just watched. Its writer and director says this was supposed to be a start to a new series of films where the witchcraft films after it was finally slapped witchcraft eight, where it could have gone off and Salem's ghost would have been the main bad guy. And this, this teacher uh, would have been the main good guy in the film. Oh, and oh, but was- the writer director after <laughs> making this movie says the movie should have never been made. <laughs> Well, I'm well. We agree. <laughs> I think we can all agree that it would have been much better off had they not. This was an uh, of all the films. Like this round was was interesting because I don't feel like, in particular, they were ripping off any one film with each of the films as they were with the first four. But this film very much felt like the Amityville horror. Like they were just ripping off the Amityville horror very poorly. And uh, the synopsis of this film is a couple moves into an old home where unbeknownst to them, a warlock was killed, turned into a rubber corpse and locked in a basement for over three, over 300 years ago. Their idiot plumber neighbor breaks down a wall in the basement and unleashes the warlock spirit to wreak havoc and potentially fuck the guy's wife. Will they survive? Does anyone fucking care? I have no idea. Um, you, you forgot I, to you forgot to preface that this rambunctious comedy. Uh, this rambunctious <laughs> comedy. Boy, this, this wasn't a horror. This this wasn't even trying to be a horror film. This. This, oh my God. You don't I, think for I, one second that they weren't trying to actually like put story first as opposed to most of the other ones? Like they weren't trying to actually finally tell a story with this film? They were trying. You know what? I have to say, you know, the, the first part of this was hard to get through. Very but once hard. It, but once it started getting crazy with the furniture flying all over the place and that blonde actress like acting like God. Oh. <laughs> Stupid, oh dumb. God. Like, like obviously is a oh. halfway intelligent woman, but was told to act like you know she's a hee haw extra. Okay, well, Brian, let's put out what it was. Now, you're referring to Anthony Stewart, who was the neighbor's wife. The Bakers yeah. are this couple's their their neighbors, and his wife, who the <laughs> once yeah. the film was done and it was posted. The producers hated her voice so much. Oh, is that what it was? Okay. That they overdubbed. <gasps> is that um, why she sounded and, so weird? Okay. And the overdub is. E- I can't imagine it being. I can't imagine that it was worse than that. What? what it's kind of hilarious. Doing? It's kind of hilarious. Mitch is the best. Mitch is plumbing. You got a leak. We got the plug. <laughs> <laughs> and and you know the women were hot. Yeah. And the guys were. Schlubs. Horrible. Yeah. They were schlubs. Every uh, last schlubs. one of them. Really bad. Really schlubs. bad. You had the skinny guy with bald skinny guy, and then you had the fat balding guy. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, you mentioned about how the first half of this film was tough to get through. It was because all it was was the guy's wife getting naked, literally. I mean, every other scene, she was losing her clothes. And then we got, so what like, kind of heart are we talking about here, Mark? No, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but, 
But but she she was the one that got the most skin time. And then like halfway through, it's like the story started, and then things got interesting. But that first half was pretty much, oh honey, you're home. Yeah, uh, yeah, it was bad. Let's, oh, we're I, in the kitchen. I have to say, oh. I really like once it got going. I enjoyed this one much better than the other three. I'll, I'll be honest. Yes. And, wow, and I think, that's uh, interesting. I, I can't think just agree. because no. just because um, the other ones, like I said, I liked maybe the first thirty minutes. And then they would it, it just block. I would much rather have a movie me kind of go like, "Oh fuck, this sucks," and get progressively better and more exciting and form into something, whether good or bad. I'm not saying this was good. I kind of like this one yeah. the best out of the other uh, out of the four. That's well, this, interesting. The thing really picks up when the Backstreet Boy, a la Irish priest, shows yeah, up. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> it just so, got okay. ridiculous. It just got yeah. ridiculous it's to the point where I had to enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. So what Mark's referring to is that eventually, over the course of time, this <coughs> their their neighbor comes over and breaks open this hole in the wall in their basement, and a red light shines through, and he, they both look at it and go, "Oh, it must be a backdraft." I don't know about you, but no backdraft I've ever seen look like a red shining light from behind a wall. That, but anyways, so they they let loose this demon. He's running havoc. The guy looks like a a creed reject with bad fucking uh, like written on tattoos. Those things were and, done with a sharpie or something. Oh, they were fucking horrible. <laughs> but but what Mark's referring to is eventually the Catholic Church sends this uh, Irish witch hunter. Uh, Protestant uh, Church of England. The Protestant that's, Church of England. That's right, that's, Mr. Thank you, Glenn. Bittner, yes. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Glenn. He Anglican sends this guy God. over to to warn them out of the blue. Oh, by the way, this house wasn't supposed to be sold to you. Yeah. Oh, just fucking dumb. This movie, where I'm shooting all over. There was some fun stuff to it. Like the the lead character. He had, he suffers from claustrophobia in the most funny way possible. Yes. Oh, yes. oh god! And he gets yeah. fucking thrown in a casket at the end, which well, this, totally this, wasn't a ripoff of Body Double, by the way. No, <laughs> not at all. Any yeah, more than the weather of a vein impalement was totally not a ripoff of the Omen either. No, <laughs> right. no that was a all. pretty fuck. That was one of the better special effects in this entire series, I think. Yeah, yeah. Well, you that know was what's funny about that awesome. that scene was. The funny thing about that scene was, is like, you know, he's he's had this pendant around him, his ne- his necklace, which is the the dagger that kept the the Salem's witch locked in that basement forever. The instant he takes that off, the fucker's dead. Yeah, like, almost <laughs> instantly. He, well, he he, it gets it ripped off, off of him. Fell off. Boom. Yeah, it, it, and then all of a sudden, boom, he's toast. He he's worn around his neck forever, and it just happens to fall off when he's in the crypt. I mean, just. Fall off. I love that they have a huge fucking crypt under their house, though. I know. That's oh, awesome. Yeah. yeah, it looks like it never been cleaned, and yeah. none of them bat two eyes about it. Oh, yeah, there's something strange going on here. Oh, there's a huge door here with a pentagram on it. Maybe <laughs> I should have opened this. <laughs> Or, or how about the neighbor who looks at the red light and then gets stuff sprayed in his eyes, and so he's covering it going, I'm blind. I'm blind. <laughs> I don't know who he's talking to, but he's talking to someone because he's telling him, I can't see. The universe. The universe. He's talking to the Protestant ter- Church of England. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Those damn Anglicans. <laughs> I got I to gotta ask, ask Glenn. Glenn, what did you think of these neighbors, the bakers? All right. In general – I enjoyed the fuck out of this movie. Yes! Oh, that's interesting. I, I can't wait to hear this. Um, just everything. It's because it, it was it was so utterly bad in every possible way. I mean, yeah. just the whole crypt in the basement, and you know, and then yeah, the the Gail and Mitch who are who are basically, you know, what? How many years before uh, being Bob and uh, his ditzy wife from that '70s show? It's basically it's yeah. them before they they existed. Bob and Mitch, um, yeah. And yeah, just the <laughs> paper dude, just like, hey, I'm just gonna show up, you know, not tell you to come over. I'm just gonna basically break into your house and start tearing down a wall. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And then of course, you know, yeah, he lets evil seep in, and I mean, you've got all the shit flying around. The Protestant Church of England Irish priest guy with. The worst Irish accent I've heard oh, since uh, Rat Pit in uh, the Devil's Own. Yeah. <laughs>
When I learned the clergy sold this house, I came as quick as I could. Their short-sightedness could very well have killed you. Okay, MacArthur. Just say it. I'm afraid something terrible has occurred here, Mr. Dunaway. Just awful. I mean, you've got, you know, the whole stuffed animal pets, uh, animal sacrifice. <laughs> Uh, and, and the whole, you know, half the movie where, you know, basically Mitch is running on all evil, pretty much going, you know, all he's missing is, is saying, you know, my precious. That's like all that's missing from him. Right. Is, you know, right. Gollum like with how evil he is and, you know, all that stuff. And I love the whole, basically, you know, you can put him back in his crypt and seal him back away and defeat him with this plastic Castle Grayskull sword <laughs> that we got from the discount bin at Kmart. <laughs> And if you think it's going to be hard, don't worry. The bad guy's going to give you so many chances to defeat <laughs> <laughs> And die almost instantly. Yes. That's just, oh. Like and the I, final I battle scene where, where he throws the lead character right toward the weapon that will kill him. See, and I'm, I'm a huge fan of, of uh, MST3K, Mystery Science yes. 2000. Yeah, yeah. And I'm watching this movie, and I'm just come, I'm just, I'm doing it. The whole Mystery Science Theater 3000 thing, the whole movie, yes. where, where you know the bad guys in, you know, basically in the ducks. You know, like, oh yeah. Once evil gets in the air ducts, that's it. You know, you're gonna have to gut the whole thing right through <laughs> the studs. You know, just ah, oh, I just I had a lot of fun with this because it was so easy to just rip everything apart. Yeah. Yeah, there was a lot. There was a lot that was just super ridiculous, super cheap. Like the opening credit sequence was super. Oh cheap my god, that was like the cheapest. Yeah, it, was a, it was a toaster I, effect. It, it, it took things. a while for for me to really start enjoying it. And this is the thing with me, I have never liked the food and sex thing. Okay, I want to have an extended conversation about this sequence. So go ahead. I'm going to let you finish, Glenn. <laughs> But I want no, to talk just, about it's this. It's just always been a thing of mine where I'm just like, you know, I don't want food around parts of my body without clothes being on that part of my body. <laughs> I, I, I know what parts Sounds of my like body a does. And I don't want, like, oh, my sandwich. I'll just pick that up, and that's fine. Put my dick in it. I'm going to put my dick in there. You know, if, if I find a hair on my food, I want to be certain it came from my beard. <laughs> not somewhere else. <laughs> no, it's, that's, that's just me with the whole, you know, food and sex thing. Oh, God, that scene. That there, there, scene? Has, there has been one good food sexing, sex scene in a movie ever. And that's in Hot Shots. Yes. <laughs> oh. That's a good, good call. Well, this sex scene was just like, here we go. You know, we're setting up. And by this point, you know, we've watched eight. We've watched seven of these films. And we kind of know the drill. We know we're going to get a little story. Then we're going to get we're gonna get some TNA where they rub up against each other. Except this, every sex scene in this movie has the goofiest fucking music over top of it. And in this scene, these this couple is in their kitchen pouring honey all over themselves, having like spaghetti, feeding each other spaghetti. And it's just like the biggest oh, fucking gross. most disgusting mess. Like, I, all I got to say is, I don't know about you guys, but anytime there's anything remotely dirty in my, in my kitchen, my wife would go nuts about it. <laughs> you think that... I mean, there was so much fucking honey on that goddamn floor that you'd be cleaning that shit for weeks. It was just so repulsive <laughs> and so, un <laughs> oh, so unsexy, so unappealing, and it with the fucking Looney Tunes music that was playing over top of it. <laughs> they, they were trying to capture the magic from nine and a half weeks. Let's not kid ourselves. They were totally going for trying to mimic the nine and a half weeks scene. If you've seen that film, there's a scene, a very famous scene with uh, ten years later. Food. Yeah. Yes, I, I, I honestly. Same thing with same thing with body double and omen. Uh, sure, I guess yeah. so. Oh, that, 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 yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I really the way it was directed, the way it was shot, the whole thing felt like they were ripping it right off of nine and a half. Oh, totally, yeah. totally. Yeah. And, and it was also Only another the lead characters were had had the combined IQ of a walnut. Well, yeah, yeah, and, and, and you know the scene, the and you know seeing the guy with like the 
the skinny guy with the bald head and everything like that. He's such a weaselly looking. It was like watching my parents do it. And <laughs> let me just say this you for the record right now. No, let me just say that for the record right here. I do not have experience with it, and <laughs> I did not enjoy watching this one bit. <laughs> there were two. Oh, the whole thing with the honey too. It's you know the I'm gonna pour honey all over you. Lick it off and then immediately go into a diabetic coma. <laughs> <laughs> with, with my pubic hair stuck to the to the kitchen floor. That that would be an interesting interesting twist on Gerald's game there. <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! There were two sex scenes in particular in this movie that were just so unappealing, it, 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 and it totally like worked against them. Was with that scene, the food scene, and then later the bakers. There's a scene where We've already established, like, their like, uh, wife who, who sounds like... You are so cute. God, you two make such a perfect couple. We've had our share of rough times. We moved here to start over. Oh, how romantic. Well, Mitch and I never fight. Well, there's no reason to. Because he's such a wild bronco in bed. Oh, he -he. They have this sex scene where there's literally Looney Tunes music playing over top of it. <laughs> And and he's doing this thing where his eyes are going whoa 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 and they're jumping on top of each other. It was the least appealing, even with the food sex scene, the food sex scene, which was gross, almost on the level of of olives off of long fingernails. Gross. Now did did was it did anyone else notice? Was it just something with the film? But it looked like his back was all fucked up. Like he had scars and weird. Birthmarks, yeah. like like in that scene, I didn't notice it in any of the other scenes, but in that, and I don't know if it was just like the fact that they there was there was honey or just the film stock, but it re I, I was it looked like his back was really fucked up, like it's scarred awesome. or birthmarked or, or or something really weird, and I didn't notice it in the in any of the other other scenes when he had his shirt off, but I was like. What the fuck is going on? It's possible because even though he Wait, was, was I the only one who noticed that? I, I thought there was something no, really jacked I, I, up with his back. I, I didn't look that closely because I was afraid, but I mean, it looked like he was. It looked like it, something was up there. I mean, yeah. it, and but you know, even though they were trying to cast him as like this kind of this like I don't know like this wacky neighbor type, you know, a little bit of blue collar comedy before it's time, whatever. He kind of reminded me of Francis from Pee Wee's Big Adventure. <laughs> you know? Jesus. And so, which of course guaranteed that I never wanted to see him in a sex scene. Oh, when you saw his wife, immediately you knew they were going to do it. Oh, I'm like, I'm, I'm well, like, please, well, I'm like please let her be having an extramarital pair. Please <laughs> let her be having an extramarital pair. <laughs> you know, and with that scene, it wouldn't have been so bad had they kept it comical. But they're going at the comedy angle of their sex. It's not sexy at all. They're just whipping their clothes off and that. And we're like, okay, this is funny. This is funny. And then for like a minute, the last minute, it kicks into the uh, cheap porn music and they get soft and sensual for a moment like it's supposed to be a serious scene and then he falls on his back and his eyes are all like well, the entire <laughs> thing yeah exactly like all of these scenes are still played like you're supposed to jerk off to them but the music totally ruins that well it's the same track it's the oh, same track it's so fucking the, awful the only slightly hot scene was the with uh, the student who with the for redhead? some reason with a red, oh freckles, oh. yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> you, Put yeah. your dicks back in your pants, <laughs> man. I'd high five you if we were in the same room. But the, uh, but the, uh, that's but, a like, bad image. <laughs> <laughs> Eiffel Tower. Continue, yeah. <laughs> Please continue where you were going, and let's let's divert <laughs> my my mind's eye away from my spawn in Eiffel Tower. Please. You were doing, like yeah, I mean the, like her like um, and she was in the last movie too. Too, in a different part, of course, Myla's yeah. Holmes or whatever her name, however yeah. you pronounce it. And she, yeah, she was sexy. And that part was kind of, you know, a little hot and everything like that and everything. For some reason, she was crushing on the bald, stringy college professor. Yeah. I couldn't figure that out. Who, by the way, can we mention, he doesn't, he just started. He does not have tenure or anything. 
and he's holding the classes in his house? After he had been kicked out of his last job for fucking a student. Yeah. Yes. And he's holding the yes. things in his house, which I'm like, I'm like saying, like, you know, okay, you don't have any leg to stand on here. You're lucky to get this job, and you're like, screw it, they can come to me. And <laughs> you know, and when they're leaving the class, one of like the stoner dudes or something says something like, "Hey, that was awesome. Can we do it again?" Yes, it's a class. You have to do it again. <laughs> I dare say it's mandatory. <laughs> well, not only that, but it wasn't just the redhead. It was like every girl in his class were macking on him. I mean, the brunette was kind of like, oh, thanks for the class, Mr. whatever the hell his name is. Oh, he's uh, it was, it's, it's very obviously yeah. a cipher for the director who wanted to, you know, be like, hey, yeah, <laughs> I could get some of this. Uh, it, apparently the director did write the screenplay. Apparently yes. it had a screenplay to uh, yes. Skyscraper, the Anna Nicole Smith film. Yes. So that makes a lot of sense. He also directed Time Barbarians. Uh, oh, that's a classic. There you go. <laughs> I do have to say, I found the cheesy 90s metal-looking guy kind of hot, though. The, oh, the, are the, you talking the, about them, the bad guy? The bad guy, with yeah. With yeah. tattoos, yeah. Well, he was, he was <laughs> Yeah, with the magic marker tattoos. He was buff. He was a buff guy. And handsome. Yeah. He was, uh, yeah, yeah. I can see isn't that. It funny? Visually, it, I was pleased with that. So Yeah, isn't it funny, though, this entire time we haven't talked, we talked about him for maybe, like, 10 seconds, and he's the bad guy. He's the menace of this film. And But the thing is, he's only in it for maybe, at most, five minutes. In this film, and instead we get we get like scenes where furniture is flying all over the place. Which, uh, it was pretty fucking fun. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> getting attacked by the refrigerator, I thought was yeah, it, it was kind of yeah. funny. Oh my god, they're just it so reminded funny. me of the car scene in the parking lot in Poltergeist Three. Yes, kind uh, of yeah. ridiculous. <laughs> well, you didn't see the bad guy too much because of all the crosses they put out. <laughs> That's a lot. I don't know where they were getting all that wood from, but they constantly were putting crosses out. Oh, yeah. Some, that somebody scene. had a good day at Home Depot, oh, let me tell you. <laughs> one, of my, one of my favorite parts was near the end where – uh, the priest, after he gets skewered uh, Old Omen style, someone goes, hey, maybe we should go get the cops. Never mind the three cops. They just knocked the fuck out before <laughs> before that seed. And someone said, hey, we should get the cops. And we're like, there were cops. Guys? You mean these guys? <laughs> the guys <laughs> the guys that just got knocked out? You mean you want to call more cops? Oh, man. This... Oh God! I, you, somebody is, come and take the other cops away. You know, you don't want them. You don't want them on your lawn forever. You know, <laughs> it's it's really shocking to me that you guys, you two, actually really enjoyed watching this one. I thought, <laughs> I thought the, I thought it was, you know, it's okay. It's better than it because looking back, and uh, I don't want to transition to our final thoughts just yet. But looking back. I kind of started assessing number one as being a lot worse than I had given it credit for. And this film in, in general was almost like kind of a remake in, in some ways. Oh, this is way better than part one, though. I thought oh. so. I think it, so. Oh. It, it, it's, it's trashier, and it has a lot more stupidity running through it. Um, so, it, yes, in that capacity, it is, it is better. And it yes. r- reminded me a little bit of some of the Italian with the crypt, the flicks, you know, with the the, the crypt underneath the house and, mm-hmm. you, you know, the, the weird witchcraft stuff. It, it had a little flavor of something like Tombs of the Blind Dead. Yeah, yeah, I'm not saying it's anywhere I'm... near that quality, but but oh. it had kind of, like you said, they are paying homage to Thoman and – it would be Body yeah. It would, it would be like that kind of movie, but on a Todd Sheets budget. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Yeah. yeah. Todd Sheets films are much better than this fucking. <laughs> <laughs> At least in my mind. Um, Just said the but... budget. <laughs> <laughs> Three hundred years ago, I used to run.
but I've actually been keeping track of as we've gone along I've been ranking these movies oh, on my no, letterbox no. account and uh, would you guys even have the forethought to even know what your list would look like if you were going to rank what we have watched so far uh, for me, these four we're reviewing right now no for the entire series so far so far oh. Or do you just want to do these four films? I, I could do these four films right now. I, I would have to maybe think a little bit more about about. – I'm working on them now. <laughs> but, but I, could, I could maybe whip it out. Okay, well, uh, I can just, I, <laughs> It's I, my I, birthday. I can whip it out. It is his birthday. No, like that. Oh, no, I guess month. not anymore. We're, we're, we're at the 12.02 mark. So, uh, so, no, so just no whipping out. <laughs> <laughs> what? 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 So, so I'm going to give this – this is your guys' assignment while I go through my list. Go ahead and quick rank out the films so far up to number eight, and I'll go down the line with mine. Um, okay. And I'll kind of give my final thoughts on them as well as we go along here. But um, I got, I got, I, you're gonna, I think you're gonna be a little surprised because I kind of changed my original rankings for uh, the first three films. Subsequently, from watching these and then thinking about the films in general, um, as to were 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 they good or were did they live up to the promise of what you know we everyone's perception of what these films should have been uh, based on their marketing and based on, you know, what they kind of attempted to be. Um, so my rankings of the film so far have been obviously my number one, if you couldn't tell was number five dance with the devil. Obviously it is when I think of a witchcraft film, it's exactly what I think of. I think of number five. Then after that was the vampire movie, the number seven judgment hour, um, I thought it was I thought it was super trashy and super goofy. Um, not as good as Dance with the Devil, but a little better. Then after that, The Temptress, number two. I thought it was uh, if we were going to keep with the trashiness, that that uh, definitely was up there. Then uh, number six, Salem's Ghost, number one. Then number three and number four. 
You still hate number four the most. I, I thought that was a total fucking pile yeah. of shit. <laughs> um, I, I am not going to change my opinion on uh, that. Oh, I, know. I, 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 I wouldn't expect you to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that really hurt you. Well, I got to be honest. The bottom four are pretty interchangeable to me. Mm. They, it, it just like, to be honest, the badness of the series, it's just they're super fucking boring and dull. And they're not even really watchable. They're not even really worth the time. While there was goofiness to, to Witchcraft 8, I personally would never want to watch it again, ever. Where number five, it, if it was on, like, if it popped on TV somewhere, I'll never watch it again. But if it was on, <laughs> somebody tossed it on, I would probably watch it with a few beers and enjoy myself. So, uh, so far up to eight, I got to admit, this batch of films wasn't too bad to watch. They were actually kind of enjoyable. <laughs> it, it was just a little bit shocking. But let's let the birthday boy go ahead and give his list. Are you ready? I'm ready. Go for it. All right. Um, I'm going to go number one. Eight was my favorite so far. Actually. Oh, wow. I think I would. I just love the, the craziness of it and some of the homages and – I would actually probably enjoy watching it again. Uh, next is seven, just because I did. I do love Ashley Ray, and I did enjoy that first thirty or forty minutes so much. Um, then five, because it did deliver on the sleaziness and uh, Marklin Kennedy's ass. Um, <laughs> four uh, would be next. Then two, the Temptress. Six, one, then three. Any general overall thoughts? On the series up to this point, it confuses me a bit. You know, I think it, it's just a general, you know, uh, concept or, or conception that we all have. It's just it, it, it's hard to know why this took off, as, as particularly with that first film being competent to us in a certain level, but just not delivering on anything right. that you would expect. The Temptress, as we said, delivered a little bit more. You, you had Delia Shepard and her multiple assets kind of <laughs> popping out every once in a while. Um, it, it, it's just confounding. I mean, th there was seemed to be so little care and thought put into any of them. Put into any of them, and it was obviously that that just because they were making money, they went on to the next one. And obviously, they made money because it it, it seems from all you know knowledge that's out there on the internet. That eight was not supposed to be a witchcraft film. No, you, you know. So obviously they made money somehow. So it, it's just it's it's just kind of a big question mark. I think in my head, you know, there are m moments of enjoyability in all of them, but they're not sleazy, goofy fun. And for the most part, and eight I think has so far come the closest to to me for that. But but would you consider eight more of kind of like the room kind of goofy fun where it's it's more of something to kind of point your finger at than anything? I don't know, man. I I, I would actually have to think about that. A I, I I've heard a lot about the room, but I have not seen the room. Oh, okay. But Same I kind of I, I, I just yeah I I just there was something about the ridiculousness of of having this huge crypt below the house and uh like i said the first half if it had continued number eight had continued the way the first half had gone i probably would have hated it but there was just something about the midway point where it just shifted into to something that i really enjoyed so that's cool that's cool glenn go ahead to give it at me man all right i'm gonna do mine in reverse order so worst is number four that that hurt more than a colonoscopy with broken <laughs> I agree um, with you wholeheartedly on that one. Then number three, which is marginally better than number four, and that diarrhea is slightly better than bloody diarrhea. Um, <laughs> and number one, um, then we go to number two. You almost kind of got, you know, a little bit of the, like they said, they tease you with the fact that this is, ex you know, this is going to be exploitation, but it really wasn't still. Um, then we go to number six, um, then seven, um, then number five is my second, because that's when you when it, witchcraft finally says they come in and they say, "Yep, we're about the titties." That's what, <laughs> that's all that we're really about. And then number eight, because that's just I don't think eight is is the best 
made of the movies, it's the one I had the most fun with. Oh, man, this is two number eights for number one in a row. This is downright shocking. <laughs> downright shocking. I, I got to say, though, our lists were pretty close there, Glenn. They were pretty yeah. close. Okay. Uh, it, general thoughts. Give your Give your final thoughts on the series up to this point, Glenn. <laughs> okay, Mark the movie man, give me your list. Oh, I'm horrible at ranking things, but okay. Uh it's actually very similar to Glenn's. I'll go from worst to best. Uh mine was worst was three. Um then four. Four was really painful. Uh, then any of these could be interchangeable. Actually all these could be tied for the word. And then, you know, two uh, and, and I liked one better than two, so so one is next, and then six because I actually enjoyed the cops. I'll admit it; I like the cops, guys. Uh, seven uh, because it was an Im- improvement over six, and uh, eight it was a lot of fun. I had too much fun with it. It was almost birdemic fun to where it was just it, it got. It's so crazy, and it was so bad in so many ways that I, I was smiling through, especially the last half of the film when things started picking up, including the uh, upskirt-looking uh, red animated mist, which didn't do anything. Oh, my I was, gosh. I was disappointed Yeah, that. that didn't do anything. I, I was yeah. hoping for a possession. I was thinking, oh, this is going to be great. He's going to possess these three girls, and we're going to get a, a demon-possessed girl scene. And he lost that potential right there. I'm like, you, you know, what kind of perv wrote this script? You know, uh, Mark, I got to tell you, with with your ideas for stories tonight, I want to see you make a movie. <laughs> <laughs> I would pay oh, double to see that movie. <laughs> a, witch, a witchcraft movie. Uh. Yes, like I mean, I've heard, I've heard like him like talk about you know like people cock blocking and one thing <laughs> and like didn't get the girl girls. I'm not like trying to like pigeonhole your pick on you. I'm oh. dead serious. I would pay, so I would see that movie. <laughs> uh, so so where were, you, where were you at? Uh, oh, it was my second best one was eight, and then five was still the best one. I, I really enjoyed it, and I don't know if it was because I was in shell shock from the first four, or if it really just felt like an actual, like Derek said, a, a witchcraft film. It it dealt with witchcraft. There there was magic actually involved, uh, you know, uh, that type of stuff, kind of what you expected from a movie with the name witchcraft, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, definitely, I would say five out of all of them is the best in the series, but eight I, I did have a whole lot of fun with. So, so general general thoughts overall to this point, Mark? Uh, it's it's up and down. It's a crap shoot with this film franchise. Again, uh, it, it must have been people were still looking at trying to fill shelves with something because that's the only thing I could explain of why they were making money on this because really they, the, the budget seems to be getting smaller. Uh, you know, I mean, the sets and everything just seem to be getting more and more yep. made for TV feel, yeah. you know, and it just, I, I don't know how they could keep on for five more films. Cause looking at this, I'm going, I would have figured eight would have killed it for sure. So, uh, I'm I'm wondering how the next five will play out because it's such a roller coaster of a ride. Uh, you know, the next one could be really phenomenal or it could be, you know, birdemic. So I, I'm kind of scared. <laughs> I'm actually kind of scared at this point for the for the remaining films of this series. I mean, birdemic two. <laughs> <Will>, sorry, <laughs> birdemic two. Yeah, yeah. well, uh, let's not even go there. Um, but we're gonna have that conversation at the end where I'm gonna have a, go up for a vote and decide how we're gonna tackle the next five movies. But before that point. Scott, you're up last. Round it out. Give me your list and your final thoughts. Well, here's the thing is that, you know, I honestly do think that, you know, it's hard to rank these films because you have the ones like none of them are good. None of them are like classical in the classical sense of good, you know, but, but, but which ones can I re- but which ones can I recommend? And you have like the one you have they're like two tiers. Like, well, these ones are equally shitty and these ones are kind of equally good. But 
from worst to best, because to continue on the theme from the last couple people here. Okay, worst one is still part one. There was just nothing to recommend it. Nothing to recommend it. It was just dull. Uh, after that, part three. Uh, after that, I know that this goes against a lot. A lot of people are saying, but I don't know what it was because it had so much. It was part seven because a lot of. I mean, it, it had rubber bat monsters. It had girls <laughs> getting staked in the park. I don't know why. I didn't like this, but I just did not like part seven. And I, I, I said, I, I even wrote in my notes, this has done the impossible. It has made sex boring. <laughs> uh, and I just, it's just, I mean, I, I just didn't take to part seven. So part seven is next. Then part four, then part two, then eight, then five. And <gasps> yeah. Part Are you <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck just happened here? <laughs> well, I know, like I said, they're they're like the all the equally shitty ones and the equally good ones, but part six I did find marginally more enjoyable. I I did enjoy that movie quite a bit. And like I said, wow. none of them are good, but I laughed my ass off during <laughs> part six. I laughed my ass off. Um, I think it was the film where I said, "I never will I take a Mr. Skin recommendation lightly again." Um, <laughs> but I was like, it was. I mean, I got what I came. I got what I came for, for uh, so to speak, for part six. Uh, because, you know, it had all the cheesy effects, the corny villains, they've always got the corny villains, the, like, the bad, the, 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 the hammy plot line and the, the softcore stuff. It had all the stuff that I would wanted to see. Now, I also loved part five. Well, not, not I didn't love any of this shit. Who the fuck am I kidding? <laughs> but <laughs> I also, um, would kind of recommend over getting your uh, balls in a vice part five <laughs> but no part six i would give the slight edge to i i knew as soon as i ranked this i'm like shit there goes <laughs> there goes my <laughs> guest spot <laughs> and for your punishment you must watch the next five witchcraft oh films. god man culpa man culpa <laughs> so, so get round out your final thoughts on this here well i mean it's like i said these things were i mean they it's a it's a weird thing because they owe their entire life their entire ability to thrive on the box art mm -hmm. you know i mean how many things can you say that that were Everything is the box art because there's really not much in the actual films. They were kind of a Johnny come lately as far as like getting their shit together in the series. I don't think they really hit their stride until part five yep. where they said, this is what people want. This is what we've been promising them. Let's actually give it to them. The male characters are always so underwhelming and you can't root for them. You know, the, the women are, either you know victims or sex toys or total skanks um and this and the special effects are lousy it's it's just what really holds your interest honestly it's like what can hold your interest because there's nothing really remarkable about any of these films um having said that i'm glad that i'm I'm glad that we're plowing through these, you know, because it's like one of those things. Got to do it, you know. Got to see this, see what it's all about. It's just like they you know, you know, it's no. not not necessarily. It's not. It's it's not like it, it, it's kind of like you know, going to uh, the time where I was like, oh boy, we finally get to go to Universal Studios, and they they at the door they told us told us, by the way, Jaws is broken, King Kong's broken, have a nice day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a perfect analogy for this. Like, I, There's no way if I would ever recommend these to anyone if they weren't doing something like what we're doing here. Mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're goofing on them together, and we're doing this for other people's enjoyment and not for our own. The, these films are all awful. Even number five that mm -hmm. that I said was, you know, it was finally the first sleazy, trashy witchcraft movie of the entire series. It's still not a good movie. 
It's still not a movie you're no. going to toss on and want to watch. If I'm going to watch a, a nice trashy movie, I'll put on a freaking Russ Meyer movie. I'm going to put something else on. I'm not going to put on Witchcraft 5. No. These movies are snore fests. <laughs> That's the thing, too. Is like, you know, I can, you know, and I, I do this on the show. I repeat the old Joe Bob Briggs rule, you know, the uh, that I the, if I put on my shows. Like I, I say, you know, a film is a right to be anything it wants to be except boring. Yeah. But a lot of these films, even the good ones, have their really dull stretches. Oh, I had a couple of these I actually had to come back to because I had fallen asleep during a couple of them. Because I watched them them later at night, and I figured, okay, well, before bed, I'll plow through this one. It's only 90 minutes. And within a half hour, I'm like, wait, Um, what just happened? Wait, what just – okay, fuck it. Click. I'll come back later to it because – you yeah, know, it was like it put me right to sleep. Do what uh, I did, Mark. I woke uh, up at five thirty in the morning, and I watched all four. Oh God! I, I He's just a trooper, him. man. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I like, I like noon. I see. This is where I'm at. Is that because of Glenn, what Glenn's been doing, and he's had marathons with with both of these episodes where he's plowed through all of them. I am almost tempted to make him watch all five of the next movies in a marathon session, but I don't want to fucking do it. So I'm <laughs> I'm I'm putting it up to you guys. Let's put it up to a vote. Do we want to do one more episode, or do we want to do two more episodes? And by that, I mean, do you want to do one episode? If we're doing the split episode, it would be one episode of three and then one episode of two where we do a, uh, an overall rounding out general thoughts episode with I, the two films. I think we need to do two. Because <laughs> if, if we cram five movies into one, that's going to be a four-hour long podcast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think so, too. But my only concern is like – um. Are people going – I mean, I don't know what our listenership is, Derek. You know far better than any of us, I think. Fuck them. Uh, but <laughs> – yeah, Honestly, I'm not concerned about but I, was, but I was just wondering, like, are they going to tune into one where it's just to two, being, two films being covered? Well, if they enjoyed the rest of these episodes, then more than likely they're going to t- tune in for the finale – all right, and then that in that case, I would say yeah, two, two episodes. Who knows? Just, it might just because up. just because I don't think you're going to get people to like Glenn says, I don't think you're going to get people to sit for that long because we babble. I know I do. You, who knows? They might come out with another witchcraft by the time we're done with this. It's entirely possible. <laughs> it's entirely possible. I don't know. It seems pretty dead at this point. But uh, all right, well that sounds good to me, guys. Again. I thank you for going on this journey with me. We are eight (laughs) films in. We're almost in the home stretch, guys. How does that feel? Bring them on. (laughs) It's 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 like it's like getting the uh, all clear from the free clinic. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. I'm pretty scarred, man. I've got a good ride. (laughs) I think I I I need to go get you know my shot and uh, antibiotics and. And make sure that I'm clean to be able to go through. Because if I get a double dose of the disease, man, on the next five movies, is, <laughs> I may not make it. This is uh, this is bitter. To me, as as bad as they are, they're a shot of confidence. Because <laughs> I know that when I make my next film, because I'm going to make another one, whenever, whenever, no matter how many movies I make, I I am I can say with the utmost confidence and security that I'll never hear Derek Carey say. That was worse than Witchcraft 4. <laughs> <laughs> you can guarantee that. I oh can guarantee my that. Gosh. Oh, I my film, God. I film myself taking a crap for an hour, and it'd still be better than Witchcraft 4. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I agree. I totally agree. So, boys, let's let's finish this one up. Let's let's stamp it, put it in the books. We've made eight films in. There, nothing can stop us now. As as Andrew Shearer told me earlier this week, we are warriors. We are warriors. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> going through the battlefield of shitty, sleazy exploitation films. So let's uh, give ourselves a round of applause. And let's doyle out the pimpage at the end of the episode. Birthday boy, Mr. Brian Kirst. 
please tell the fine listeners of Astro Radio Z where we can find you. Do you check out Big A Horror Fan on Facebook or Big A Horror Fan uh, dot com? And uh, yeah, and just uh, make sure that God continues to piss down your fucking throat. That's, <laughs> <laughs> That's my line, dude. I, I well, you know, I, you know, I, 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 I'm only take from the best, Mister Carey. <laughs> only from the best. And speaking <laughs> of that, Brian, you share a birthday with Fenguli. That's oh, awesome. That's nice. awesome. So Fenguli on one side and Liza Minnelli on the other. I've got two uh, clowns. <laughs> 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 they kind of look the same now. Too. I know, seriously. Yeah. seriously. <laughs> this is very true. That's pretty awesome. That's pretty awesome. No, Fenguli's awesome. I'm, on, I'm honored. I'm honored. Yes. I'm humble. Uh, Mr. Glenn Bittner. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, you can find me at the B-Movie Bunker, um, amongst other things that I do. But the B-Movie Bunker... Is coming up on episode two hundred. Awesome! Yeah. Which I hear, I hear you're going to be doing full frontal nudity in this episode. From what I heard, I will be doing full frontal nudity while clothed. So. <laughs> nudity of the mind. <laughs> YouTube just you know those restrictions they have. Oh. I, I've got something worked out that I, I think will work, but I don't know. I wanted something special for episode 200, but I'm also kind of lazy <laughs> in, in what I want to do, so we'll see what happens. I, I'm hoping to actually have that up uh, by the end of this week. Awesome. I can't awesome. wait to see this, man. Can you give us a little teaser? I'll, I'll give you the topic. I am doing a – the b Bunker is reviewing the b Bunker. Oh, there you go. Oh. Way to go. Way to go. There we I'm go. Doing myself. Oh, clever, I'm very clever. meta. Clever. I like that. There we go. Looking forward to that one. Mark the movie man. Uh, you can find me on my YouTube channel, uh, youtube.com slash special mark with the final cut, uh, where I mostly feature the independent horror films now. I've been doing a lot of independent lately. Uh, otherwise, you can also find me at welivefilm.com. I'm doing written reviews there, as well as uh, hosting Horror Thursdays, which obviously are every Thursday. You've got a new episode where I bring uh, obscure and new and old and whatever horror film I feel like to uh, the masses out there. So uh, that's where you can find me. And then on here and, and various podcasts as well. And there's also a special marks productions uh, dot com, which I sometimes update. <laughs> so you can find it there where we have episodes of the spoiler room, which is a uh, yeah. little hangout I do, uh, which is a lot of fun. So, yeah, I, I'm all over the place. Bring back Scott Lonely Davis. Trooper. <laughs> what, what was that, Glenn? I told him to bring back Lonely Trooper. I've got, you know, in all honesty, I have three episodes written. I really but it's do. it's Lonely it. Trooper. If, if you go to my channel, it's what I started out as. It's basically a vlog with a stormtrooper action figure, and it's basically a day in the life of a stormtrooper, and I take him through all three films. So he, he talks about the <laughs> battle at the Death Star. He talks about being stuck in Hoth. He talks about being stuck on Tet. Tattooy, as he calls it, uh, uh, all these things, and that's when I started my channel out. Uh, was I gotta just, see that. It's just this vlog, and all I do is I take my 1975, uh, no, 77 stormtrooper action figure, and put him in front of a green screen, and he has these. He he basically talks about his life, and I did uh, 26 episodes of those all together. Um, wow. Holy jeez. I want to I, I binge watch those. <laughs> I do. They're, they're, they're on my channel. I've got a Lonely Trooper playlist so uh, where you can catch them all. So uh, he's, he's always trying to get promoted to a black suit, as he says. Uh, but, of course, <laughs> something always comes up or something happens. And I, I just put this guy through torture. I, I, his life's a hell, and I've had a lot of fun doing them, but I kind of ran out of ideas. So I tapered off and people for years have been saying, bring him back. And I actually have three episodes written uh, and I've got uh, like three more in mind. So I may be shooting those soon. Nice. Awesome. 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 Well, keep us up to date on that, Mark. Got, go ahead and tell the fine listeners oh. of Astro Radio Z where they can find you. Right. Well, I do do some stuff for filmgeekcentral.com still, and that's kind of in limbo. I don't know exactly what's happening. I 
would like to continue with it. My main thing is the web series Movieocrity. That's M O. Yay! Thank you. <laughs> M O V I R O C I. T Y. I don't know. I might be a little hammered. I don't know if that's the right spelling. Um, <laughs> but look it up, Movieocrity. It's on YouTube. Um, in the second season now, um, as of the recording of this show, we've got three episodes. In, we're three episodes in, and I'm really kind of happy and surprised and humbled by some of the support that I've gotten. It's been read a lot, and I'm hoping to do a lot more with it. It's, uh, it's cool. a, my web series, Movieocrity. Awesome. Well, I thank all of you gents for coming on and doing this with me. Um, from Brian to Glenn to Mark, Scott, and myself, Derek Carey, thank you for tuning in. This is another episode of Astro Radio Z. You can find Astro Radio Z on Tumblr, where you can catch out all of our episodes and some of the old episodes with Corey. Or go to the Twitter page or the Facebook page. Check it all out. You can find me on the web. You can find some of the movies I make on the web. Just seek me out. I don't feel like plugging that shit tonight. You, uh, have some, there's a thing called the internet. You can go find it. Uh, whatever. Anyways, thank you for tuning in to another episode of Astro Radio Z. I'm warning you, there will be two more of these episodes. So for all of you sadists out there and all you masochists that hate yourselves, prepare yourself. There's more witchcraft pain coming at you.